Hello, folks, and hey, Bear. Welcome to the Nate Land Podcast. I'm here with Brian Bates, Dusty Slay, and filling in for Aaron. Filling in. Justin oh. Smith. Aaron. I didn't even notice. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, hey, I, don't, I don't think he's going to appreciate that <laughs> right out of the gate. <laughs> uh, Aaron uh, is like got, he's getting caught out of the country or something like that. Right? Yeah. He got arrested by Mexico. Is yeah. Gout flared uh, up? Yeah, he had to do something. I heard he'll never passport. make it back to the country. Yeah, yeah. He had passport issues. Yeah. Uh, a lot of had his fair share of um uh, you know, like cop stuff. Mm-hmm. Getting arrested a bunch. Constantly in trouble. I can't even take the guy on the road. Yeah. Constantly yeah. in trouble. It's a lot of stuff. Yeah. Uh today brought to you by Mizzen and Maine. So if you want the best cold weather clothing this holiday season, check out Mizzen and Maine. Right now, if you go to Mizzen and Maine and use promo code Nate, you will receive $35, $35 off any regular price order of $125 or more. That is $35 off when you go to Mizzen and Maine, M I Z Z E N and M A I N dot com and use our promo code Nate. Also, get rid of useless sub- subscriptions with Rocket Money now. Uh, are you wasting money on subscriptions? 80% of people have subscriptions they forgot about. Go to rocketmoney.com slash Nate. Seriously, it could save you hundreds per year. That's rocketmoney.com slash Nate. This holiday season, if you're looking for a unique gift that inspires curiosity, travel, and culture, give the gift of Babel. Babel is the language learning app that sold more than 10 million subscriptions and right now, get up to 55% off of your subscription when you go to babbel.com slash Nate. That's babbel.com slash Nate for up to 55% off your subscription. Babbel, language for life. All right. Hey, no one knows better than me that life is busy and your well-being is important. Athletic Greens makes it so easy to get the vitamins you need every day with just one scoop, Okay. Athletic Greens has given you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. Visit athleticgreens.com slash Nate for a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. That's athleticgreens.com slash Nate. There we go. I like that. was... That good. Was a good it feels good. Yeah. I mean, he looked like he was voice acting. Yeah. 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 Yes. See, I don't know if that's the voice they want reading that. <laughs> it feels good. Yes. Athletic is uh, hi. <laughs> Could you just imagine the ad checkers like, come on, yeah. not dusty, it's not dusty, not dusty. Not dusty. I, <laughs> I think sales are boosted. I think They're boosted. Oh, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. I gave up four packs a day. I drink Athletics Greens now. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> and it's like yeah. just getting better. Get clean with Athletic Greens. Getting, yeah. Yeah. They, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's what they should say. It is. Yeah. Uh, welcome, everybody. Uh, glad to have you. Uh, we had an awesome uh, uh, week. We got Justin Smith here because we said fill in for Aaron. Justin has a spe- his special out. Yeah, yeah. Coronation. Yeah. Out on YouTube right now. It's doing so good too. It's doing like, great. It's I mean, awesome. It's doing great on all the social yeah. media things. Clips are doing good. Like people are finding me, and it's like it's it's. Like the first week and a half we've had it out, it's been great. That's awesome, dude. Yeah, I watch a lot happens in this special. Oh, so much, yeah. dude! It's crazy. Some power outages, some hecklers. I mean, the first the first time, uh, like literally, we're. I mean, I'm doing this whole thing. I'm so nervous because I'm kind of doing it all by myself. And you're like, all right, you. I built a set and all this stuff. And the first show, like, I just gotten off the phone. Literally, I just gotten off the phone with you, and you're like, hey, man, you're gonna crush it. And I walk on stage. And within two minutes, the lights go completely out on my thing. Cause like the light guy just hits the button and yeah. it goes dark and it messed with the lights so much that, uh, never get a good light guy out. Here. I mean, never, we can't, you can't do it, which is, it's so, it's just so funny. The lighting guy was, uh, uh, a comic also. Oh, really? Yeah, he yeah. opens for Mark Norman. His name's Corbin Lamaster. Yeah. But he's like a, he goes, dude, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Yeah. But they, when they turn the lights back on, they, uh, um, they, it was like a red, like a, there was a red thing that like we had set the lights before and the shade was different. Yeah. And so we had to use that show. Like there was no cutting and editing. Yeah. It was like, all right, well, cause it looks so different. Yeah. But it turned out, I thought it looks great. Yeah, that and, makes it fun. That's what makes yeah. it, yeah. you know, it's, uh, it's the only part actually, I remember. 
Yeah. yeah. Like, that's yeah. something. <laughs> Sounds yeah. like an Undertaker versus Kane match. In there. <laughs> I mean, it really was. Like, Let's go out, red tent. Yeah. It was, but it was so much fun. And then the, the, we had the guy, I talk about Garth Brooks in the special, and I talk about his lyrics and how people can finish his lyrics. And I, I do a line, and then I do another line. And then this has never happened before, but a guy, when it's so quiet, yells out the next lyric to the song. Yeah. Like, and it was just so per like everything about it was like, it was so, it was not what you would want, but it was so perfect for me. Yeah. And that's, that's what I think makes it feel so special. Yeah. Is that it's so like, oh, this is, this is, this is like my, this special's my whole career where it's like nothing has gone as planned, but it feels like it's perfect for me. And that's like, that's, I, that's how I got where I am. Yeah. And yeah. so I'm, I'm very proud of it. Yeah. That's great. Dude. And if you, you know, we're you, proud of it. Oh, thanks, buddy. Go to go go check it out. It's Coronation on uh, YouTube. I've posted it. Uh, yeah, we're in Nate Lane. We're posted. We probably, I think we did post it. We're posted yeah. again now, uh, so they can see it. But yeah, it's we were the reason that that's the title. Yeah. Because we were we were in. Uh, he doesn't we were, know what Coronation means. So. Yeah, well, yeah, <laughs> of course. Thank you, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was Corona Nation. Yeah, that's. that's yeah. <laughs> I don't know what it means now. Oh, so coronation is the I'm still not know is yeah. the ceremony when a when a prince or a princess becomes a king or queen. Oh, and so the reason I loved it because we talked about we were in uh, our Detroit somewhere, and I was sitting in a chair and it was like this weird kind of like king like chair in a green room, and Nate goes, "It looks like you belong in that chair." And I think he was just talking about how wide it was, but I took it way more, <laughs> way deeper. Than <laughs> deep. I say a lot of things, Justin. Uh, <laughs> but Nate, he he took my phone and he took a picture of it, and it just got me thinking about what like when a what a coronation is because it's the moment that who you were destined to become, like becomes like it's the moment that that destiny and reality meet. Yeah. And so I was like, this is it's kind of perfect that this special turned out the way that it did. Because the whole thing is is me kind of becoming who I was supposed to be. And the special's clean. Like before this, I was not a clean comic. Mm. I wasn't doing all this. You know, I wasn't doing what I'm doing now. And this is kind of like a changing my style and doing a bunch of stuff and still being me very much. And, uh, and now you're the king of comedy. And now I'm the king of comedy. That's right. I, I just got to get the crown. Thing. Yeah. But it's in the mail. You yes. know how eBay is. Yeah. So <laughs> The chair was great. Yeah. So great. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it did fit. I think the like if we have to do a studio update, I think that's the, the next yeah, the king the next chair. Thing. Yeah. Sitting it. Uh also I wanted to show you guys uh we had uh Nick Rochelle, Eli, and Zoe Cordell. But they made this uh Eli and Zoe, Eli uh was the one that he could name all the episodes. You yeah, told me the episodes. That was so great. But they made a Nate Land podcast from A to Z. Uh I believe they're on the Facebook group and uh or yeah, that, yeah they are on there. Yeah, they're yeah. everywhere. Uh, but it's like, so it goes, it starts with A is for Aaron, the host of Aaron Lamb that airs, airs during Nate Land. The answer to a question that's never been asked, according to this, the best place to meet your spouse in the aughts was Applebee's. And so like all stuff like that, it's just so cool. And like, I was just like reading through it. It's just, just J is for Justin Smith. I made the list. Fellow comedian that? and guest. It's also for Jason, a candidate on the Mount Rushmore of horror villains. And last but not least, it's for jokes of which there are plenty. It's great. Yeah, yeah, it's so cool. Like uh, they're uh, Dusty. I don't think you're in here, but it's no. Yeah, I get yeah. skipped a lot. <laughs> Dusty, you're in the you're in the D's. D is for Dusty. All right. The newest addition to the show and host of Dusty Town, Dead Gummit. He's a great addition to the show and is supportive of Nate's dyslexia. All right. That's so funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's just so clever, man. You got your hat on. Why is for you look worried, a perfect description of Bates. No worries, though a couple of yee-yees from the crowd can boost his confidence. This was wow. a gift given to me out yeah. in Irvine, California. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah? Yeah. The, I'll read this last one. Z is for Zany's, the home comedy club for the guys and the site of Nate's mural version 2.0. It's one of the last places you can find a cross-section of all different types of people, <laughs> backgrounds, <laughs> races, religions can gather. It's America. It's very up to date. Very up to date. I mean, they got some recent jokes in there. Yeah, yeah, it's so good. Thank you, Cordells. <laughs> People are telling us you dump. There's nothing left. <laughs> you just dump it on the floor. the floor. Yeah, that made a louder sound. <laughs> just sitting next to me. I mean, you have the best fans, I think, in, of any group of people that I've ever yeah, seen. Yeah, it's great. 
Yeah, I think everybody's nice like that. I, I'm, I'm not on the Facebook group, but it's uh, everybody's incredibly nice. Yeah, yeah it's just awesome. It's you know, nice little, nice little uh, place where everybody can just be nice to each other and yeah. it's sweet. And Sometimes I try to jump in, shake it up a bit. Yeah, yeah. you know, bring some drama. The bad boy from <laughs> Dusty Town. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You come rolling up in on your horse. Yeah. I like to try to bring yeah. a little drama in there. Yeah. That's a good time. Yeah. That's I get time. it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we, I met them, uh, or I've met them before, and then uh, it was this weekend, uh, Cape, Cape Girardeau. Girardeau. Uh, where we at? We're in Huntsville. A little baby Bates. Yeah. A little pop-up appearance. Yep. Yep, Everybody that was fun. I was at the Braun, appearance. Ron Braun Center in Huntsville. That was great. I mean, the the, the shows this weekend looked amazing. Like it was looked, it looked great. Yeah, it was awesome. I mean, they were all awesome. And uh, it, Little Rock, and uh, I mean, I'm at Huntsville, Little Rock, Mobile, Cape Girardeau. That is it. That's it. Yeah. And uh, this week I'll be in Charlotte, Charlotte, and then uh, some other places. I already forgot where I'm going, yeah. but. Uh, <laughs> But it's uh, and then Midland, Texas, El Paso feels like your vibe. Midland, Texas. yeah, I like it. Uh, there, uh, w- yeah, the Huntsville one, the Huntsville show was great. And uh, my wife's from there, my wife saw all these concerts there growing up, so it was cool to be back there, uh, or for, you know, to be there. And like she, you know, went to all that stuff there. They have an unreal green room, uh, also, very nice security guy, but it was very funny. I talked to him, I'm on stage with Harper. Uh, like, you know, four doors or anything. And me and Harper just standing up there and uh, talking. And then the guy asked, and I had this happen twice this weekend, actually. Uh, but they, you know, they not everybody knows. I got my hat on. I'm like, this so the guy's like, hey, is this like a band? Like, you know, the people that work there, I don't think they, right. the way I can maybe not know a city, they don't really know. They're just going to work. Right. So uh, he's like, you know, if this is like got music or something, I was like, nah, it's a comedian. And he's like, oh, okay. And then, uh, then I was like, I'm like, I hope he's good. Or, you know, you never know, like just whatever. And then he's like, oh, I, you know, he's very nice. And then I just, I was like, well, that, it's me actually. Mm. Uh, and then he's like, oh, okay. He's like, man, it's crazy. You do comedy? Like people, it's like hard to, very sweet guy. I'm not trying to say this in a mean way, but it's like, they don't, I feel like they don't know how to talk to comedians, which is fine. We're not like, I don't know. We're not like, it's, they're just, bands are everywhere. Yes. And so he's like, you're fine. And he goes, ah, it's crazy. You do comedy. He goes, full time? He's standing on a stage in an arena. You're like, I'm here. Like, yeah. What? Yeah. I was like, well, you nah, know. Nah, just try. a part time gig. I dabble yeah, with it a I bit. I dabble with it. Uh, it's very funny. <laughs> Main <laughs> thing is Home Depot assistant manager, but I'll do the arena full once time. in a while. <laughs> and uh, he did catch it. He goes, well, I mean, I guess you're here. So beautiful. But it is, yeah, it was very funny. I was like, yeah, you know, I try to bounce around. Well, I feel like there's a bunch of like added pressure. Like when you when you meet somebody that's like a comic, they 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 there's like there's a moment of panic. With like, yeah. well, I don't, I gotta be funny now. It's like, yeah. no, no, no. Like, I'm not at work. Like, you can just yeah. be a yeah. normal person. Yeah, we were doing so good before this. Yeah, I yeah I uh, I want them to be funny. No, yeah, I'm yeah. <laughs> again. yeah. I'm like, uh, tell me a joke. Yeah. I'm a comedian. I need a new joke. Yeah. Uh, tell it to me. Yeah, no, he was very, he was, he was great. He was cool. And then the next in uh, Cape Girardeau too, we had some guys uh, that were like helping. Uh, and this, they were, uh, they have a good thing. It's called Breaking Bonds, and it's like, uh, I think it's for people that have struggled or had trouble in the past, and they and they get them straight, and then so then they work and they find them jobs. So they're helping like set up the stage with our the stage crew that we have. That's our everyday one. Then they come in and help. And they were all super cool. And then I talked to one guy. His kid comes over him. He's 21. And he's like, uh, same kind of thing. Y'all know what's going on here. Like, whatever. And, we're like, and he was talking to me, Dustin Chafin, and Vecchion. And uh, it's like, oh, we're comics. Or, you know, whatever. He said, it's us. And then he's like, oh, man. It's crazy. And then he tells us, he's like, yeah, see some of your act? <laughs> he wanted me. <laughs> and we're like, I go, what? And he's like, just do some of, you know. <laughs> he's like, you can't do any of it right here? And I go, like us just standing here? And I was like, no, nah, that's not going to be. That's going to be the worst, dude. I was like, he goes, oh, he goes, oh. and Dustin was laughing. He goes, I mean, that guy's giggling. We got to, you know, <laughs> like he just couldn't. He's like, just get it going, you know. <laughs> and that's what I love Dustin. Dustin's like, hey, if we just start the show, then yeah. like more people will show up. Yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> that's- and I was like, ah, it's, you know, it's not going to be. uh 
Yeah, I always hate that because I'm like, I'm going to do a joke for you. You're not going to laugh. And then from now on, you're going to be like, that guy's not funny. Yeah. I met that guy one time. Yeah. Yeah, he did his act in front of me. <laughs> yeah. On the street. <laughs> on the street. Cape Girardeau. <laughs> on Cape Girardeau. And it was not good. Yeah. <laughs> well, I will say you always do good. Like, I love when I watch your shows from the side stage. You always do well with people that work in those auditoriums that yeah. don't know you. And, like, you can tell they're not – you can tell they're, like – usually yeah. they're, like, theater people yeah. or they're, like, music people. And a lot of times they don't – like, the worlds don't vibe with comedy. Yeah. And – but I always love watching people that would not typically be a fan of yours. And I watch you win them over. And that's, like, my favorite thing where – a I watched a dude in Memphis, like he was in a chair and you did a joke. I forget what joke it was, but he just turned, he just turned and he looked through the, like the top of his eyebrows at the guy next to him and he goes, man, this dude's funny. Yeah. And it was just, it was such like a genuine like moment. And I was like to watch you like win people over that wouldn't ever, yeah. like the algorithm, like your stuff wouldn't find them. We win the people over that are forced to be there. Yeah. Like they're, you know, they, those are the, it is yeah, fun to make. It's a relief them for them because yeah. they're like, I got to be here either way. Yeah. Yeah. So good thing. This <laughs> seems fun. At least it's enjoying. Yes. Yeah. 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 No, that kid was very, he was, he's, he's straightened his life up. And so we were told him how great that was and stuff, but it was funny that he was like, yeah, just do it. And those guys were, when I, we left, they're like, great job. Like they were cool. But do you even, think if Dusty was with you when you left, they'd be like, no, you stay here. You're with us. Well, that, yeah, they're like, yeah, when you get done, you come help change some light bulbs here. <laughs> I would have, I would have introduced you as their success story. <laughs> yes. I'm, I broke some bonds. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, so yeah, fun weekend. You did, y'all have it or? I was in, yeah, I was with you and that's why Ron Bronson are so big. I drove down separately, got there, thought plenty of time. Went in the back door. Tony, his, his guy, said, yeah, we're just come on in and couldn't find anybody. I thought, I'll just stand on stage so they don't know. I don't stage quite a while, and then all these women keep coming in. And I finally asked, them, like, um, what is this? And they're like, this is the sound of music. I was on the on the wrong stage, stage. Yeah. <laughs> for quite a while, just loading it as they load in for the sound of music. So yeah. <laughs> wow. I'm glad um, I asked, or I could have yeah. been in the production. I mean, that's <laughs> that's Bates. Yeah. That's a Bates yeah. show right there. It's like halfway through before I realize yeah. I'm out there singing a solo. You go up. Yeah. <laughs> there, yeah, just standing on this stage, the sound of music. <laughs> I mean, how do you even get into it? How do you even I, no I, I didn't know they had another theater. <laughs> Well, they do. They People do. People are like, and "What are you doing, doing here?" You're like, I'm performing tonight. Yeah. <laughs> and they're like, "Okay, well, who are you playing in Sound of Music?" <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. One, one of the, the Fran Bron Trap. What is it? Yeah, one of the boys. Von Trap. Yeah. 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 And the Fran Trap and the Von Braun Center. They're doing like a future episode where they have the kids come pl- be a- <laughs> adults, grandfathers. <laughs> you're the. <laughs> you're one of the twins. Yeah. But as an old age, yeah. the other twin didn't make it. It's yeah. like, oh, we went through some tough times. <laughs> you know what's so funny is you were talking about that and you guys kept saying this, and I realized that I was confusing Fiddler on the Roof with the sound of music. And I was like, I don't think that's how it Yeah. When do they start doing like I was I was lost when you guys were doing that whole thing. And I was like, I'm well, just Bates not, walked in and he was standing yeah. on top of a roof, crooked. And he goes, "Well, this is not comfortable." Yeah, I don't, and I don't need a fiddle out here. Yeah, and his name must be doing a one man show type of thing. You know, it's got a big production. Yeah, what is this, John Christ? Yeah, I mean, he's just he just keeps adding trailers. I mean, it's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> what? Look at this green room. There's so many snacks. How many people are on this show? <laughs> Oh, and I was with Henry Cho um, Friday night in uh, Ringo, Georgia, and he takes questions from the audience. And someone asked, "When are you going to be on Nate Land again?" <laughs> yeah, that's great. Yeah, look at that. And then he did a, a VIP afterwards meet and greet, and the guy wore a Batesville T-shirt. Oh, really? With my that's my right. face on it. Yeah, <laughs> that's funny. Did you sign it? Uh, no, but yes. I I made sure I pointed out to Henry that yeah, <laughs> yeah he, 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 he you you gave me a sign and he goes no, <laughs> <laughs> no that's good I was yeah. wearing it ironically yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah where were you at uh I was here this weekend okay. I went and saw Marin on Saturday oh yeah um and and Andrew Stanley yeah uh, opened for him Andrew's a good comic from yeah. Atlanta but it's like uh. I was like, I was so excited because uh, I was like, I don't, because Marin's getting older, so you don't know how long you're going to get to see him. 
And not that old. But I mean, <laughs> I mean, it's just well, it's his, like fifty-eight. Yeah. I mean, wow. but it's still like, like he's eighty. I mean, it's. <laughs> yeah. Can I tell you what it is? I think it's just the fact. I think Rickles. It's, <laughs> yeah. I think it's just the fact that I I follow him on Instagram and I watch some of the things that he posts and I'm just like, like the way that he's posting now. You're like, oh, this is a guy that maybe doesn't quite understand, like so, like the social media that he's posting. You know how it just like it just feels older than like. Like I think that's why I feel like that. So I was like, I yeah. gotta get, I gotta, like you want to see them like when they're still like it's you know oh, when they're still yeah. like producing. Yeah, but stuff. I yeah, I think he still is. Yeah, I mean, he yeah. absolutely was. Yeah, I mean, he yeah. blew me away for two hours. It's uh, but I do understand that like posting the videos, like you can, you gotta, you gotta be able to catch yourself to be an age to go like, all right, I need to probably not post because it can you can really show your age. Right, that is true. I'm not saying he's doing that. I think he just does it, and he does. It's him, right? Uh, but it's that is very true because you can just post. I mean, I always joke about you posting your camera, but you do. <laughs> you, but that was like a mini joke when I said you'd always have it too close yeah. to you. Yeah, you have it like here, <laughs> and it's like you're because. But if someone gets too old, it's like yeah, you got to catch. Yourself. If you you know if you're like I don't want everybody. You know you're like I don't want it to really look like hey I don't know what I'm doing. Right. Because because people are posting. There's ways that they do it now, and so I, I'd imagine. I guess you know. I don't. I don't know. But. I mean, people pick out outfits just to be on social media now. Yeah. Like it's like crazy, where it's like, and I've even noticed like there are certain videos where if I wear something like like ridiculous, it's like the video. Like I can feel that people don't respond as well. Yeah. To. So yeah, always. It, it, I can see you watching, the, checking my what uh, I'm wearing now. You're like, yeah. well, that's what you chose to wear today. That's great. Uh, <laughs> I would, and all the kids listen. Remember, social media is not real. Yeah, always <laughs> just remember that. You see all these people post this stuff. These people have all these. It seems like everything's. They show you. Uh, Dove Davidoff. One of the jokes that he gets like this. Social media. He said it shows a. a a moment of time like it's a moment it's not your life it's not it's just like a second of that day like you know and you hope kids remember that sometimes if i have my wife film something for me or something we'll end up fighting about it and then like and then it'll go she'll go all right all right all right just do it just do it and then records and i'm like all right we're having a good time but like two seconds ago <laughs> yeah we were mid-fight and now i'm like i can't even do it now now i can't i can't fake happiness the uh <laughs> So I wish you would leave there. Fine, just do it, and you go. Hey, <laughs> yeah. uh, that's one that I would catch is to like not say, "All right, go." Like if that's a big one. I think if you film something, it's like just nod, don't, because there's a lot of like, "All right, go." Hey, what's up, everybody? <laughs> right. uh, you yeah, know, yeah. and you're like the person's. It, it's like just point, right? It like adds to it. Yeah, it's well, it's like in television, they don't. They, if they count you down, it's usually five, four, three, and then they point. They don't yeah. say two, one, so you don't yeah. get caught doing it. Yeah, yeah. Two, one. I think now. Go. <laughs> I think now the hard part is if you film anything out in public, you just have people watching you do things. Like when I film stuff in my apartment, I literally have a dog park that's like next to my apartment. So literally, one of the times I was doing a thing for Halloween, I was filming like a different people that pass out candy. And each time I would open the door in like a different outfit, I just had a row of dogs just watching me do this with all the people. Like, so all these people are just trying to take their dogs out and smoking cigarettes and they're watching me come to the door in ridiculous outfits. And I'm just like, this is so stupid. Like, why am I yeah. doing this whole thing? And then when it's all done, you're like, oh, I guess that was okay. Yeah. Whenever I'm filming myself in public doing something, and then I see like an older couple, I want to be like, "I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry this is happening. Yeah, I'm yeah. sorry that the world has changed in this way. Yeah, I make fun of people like me too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I always would want to. Yeah, I, I don't. Even we walk around filming stuff uh, on the road. I mean, I get real uncomfortable with it. Even yeah. though, and uh, where I'm just like, I don't want these. I don't want a camera following. Like it just feels dumb and. Yeah, you just even though, you, but it is. It's like you're putting stuff out, but then you're just like, I'm so uncomfortable. Yeah, the final product usually makes it worth it. Yeah, but in the moment, it's like, oh, this is ridiculous. Yeah, yeah, I don't. It's yeah, yeah. I that's the thing. I hope you know, like I know a lot of people. 
uh, it's like you can if you ever feel sad if you if you're on social media like I, it it all goes back to social media. I think it's all because you're just looking because it is. You look at I get annoyed. You look at it and you're just seeing like these con you know because so many people just like talk in it. The they just it's like almost like you like that's your friend. Mm -hmm. As you're just talking when people talk and they're not looking at it, you're like, man, that's a lot. Like you know, but they, I guess they get into that rhythm and it works. You know, yeah. they like it. If you like it, but then you also can't, you just can't look at it and then think like, man, because it looks like everybody's doing something. It yeah. looks like everything's happening for everybody. Just think about your one, even if you just thought about one thing in the morning, if I was like, just, we just posted podcast record, like, and then whatever, it, like anybody else that feels like they're doing nothing is like, God, I'm not doing anything today. They're doing that today. Or, and you're like, no, 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 dude, we might do this and then sleep for yeah. 20 hours <laughs> all right it, like it doesn't matter hashtag like, on the grind on the grind yeah, yeah. <laughs> everything yeah is that what bates is posting it? yeah sorry yeah <laughs> <laughs> i was about to be i would like to see the video of that show the microphone and it's just being jerky <laughs> <laughs> like that's how you see Bates. it's just like hey dude, dude. They're like, God, what was it Did, uh, hawk get it <laughs> squirrels <laughs> uh where were you at I went out to California. I did a private gig, wow. but I went out to the um, like farm country. Let them country. know you're working. Yeah, exactly. You post a video. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I don't like people to think I'm sitting around. If there's yeah. not a date on the calendar, I'm still working. Yeah. Uh, but I went out to farm country, Turlock, California. That where they raise a lot of almonds, and uh, I went to a dairy farm. This guy had a a dairy farm where like hundreds of cows could sit on this. They walk up and then and then the thing moves. It's a circle and it moves and each and a cow just keeps stepping on. And then it like kind of robot connects to the to the udders and milks them as it goes around. And then when it's done, it just pops off and then the cow exits. And it blew my mind. I mean, my dad grew up milking cows, but he was like milking a cow mm. with his hands. I mean, this thing blew my mind. And is it like the New Jersey gas pumps when you don't have to pump your own gas? Kind of yeah, I guess so. For the cow, yeah, they're like, yeah. you know, finally, you know, I don't know, but maybe, uh, you know, the cow, I guess the cow would be the, the pump. <laughs> the cow would be the car. That's oh, yeah. It's opposite. Yeah. So they just like, you know. But it was, I'd never seen anything like that. I've seen a bunch of dairy farms, but this was yeah. pretty mind blowing. Uh, do they say raisin almonds? Is that how they say it? Like well, they, they probably were, say grow. Like they go through school and you have a family, you have parents, you, yeah. have, two, you have two walnuts. Yeah, they're like a family for you. Yeah, That's yeah. where the, the Blue Diamond Almond place is yeah. at, is right there. I saw that factory, Yeah, Blue Diamond Almonds. We got to go visit our walnut today. Yeah, yeah, you know, you, you spend time with them. Yeah. You know, you get to know them. Yeah. And then they say they take a machine and grab the tree and shake the tree, and that's all they get all the almonds out of. I think they'd come up with a better way. You would think, but they they have a machine that That's just maybe shakes the, best the tree. Way. Yeah, so. like it vibrates and they all fall off. Maybe that is the cleanest way for it to do it. Like you know, you're not pulling. And they grow pistachios, and it's just fun to see because we have so many things in containers that you don't even think about where that came from. Yeah, you know, you go to the gas station buy some pistachios, and you're just eating them in the car. You don't think about them growing on a tree. Yeah, at least I don't. I was in the place where they make containers this weekend. Okay, all right. <laughs> you don't think about what goes you don't in think, there. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. just always see them. <laughs> yeah. You know, and you're like, you don't see them with nothing on them. It's like, I see them from the beginning. <laughs> right. It's nice. Yeah, it is good. I'm glad we got to see it all. Yeah. You know. All right. Uh, start off with you guys, uh, with your comments. World Cup comments. I think we nailed it. Uh, also, I mean, do, do you have a Vandy thing? Did anybody... Well, uh, uh, you know, last we pre-recorded, and last yeah. week you had your Vandy, gear, Vandy gear on, and uh, um, we we're like, I'm like, we're bowl bound, and you're like, I ah, don't jinx us, but I'm feeling good. And Tristan put the score up while we were saying all that. Oh, really? So That's funny. <laughs> it's yeah. showing a Tennessee winning 56 to nothing while we we're like, I don't uh, know, I feel yeah, pretty good yeah, about yeah, yeah. it. <laughs> it's uh, I got a helmet from Coach Clark Lee, new helmet up there. Uh, he wrote a very nice note. I've not got to meet him yet, but I mean, I'm a giant fan and yeah, it did not go our way, but, uh, I, I, I still love where we're, where we're headed and, uh, yeah. we had a lot of fun. Uh, world cup comments, Jeffrey shell quits. Amazingly, they managed to know less about the world cup and soccer than they did about physics. I love these guys. Yeah. 
Well, we're physics geniuses. Yes. I don't know so, how that's even a shocker for Yeah, us. yeah. Uh, I've been watching the World Cup. I watched uh, the U.S. Felt like we should have won that. Uh, what well, is weird to look at the stats for a soccer game? Because I never, I never watched soccer other than the World Cup. But to watch like the the way they monitor like possession time and stuff mm-hmm. like that, and you're like, these are stats I didn't even know that existed. Yeah. And then by the end of it, you're like, well, I feel like we should have had a better performance than that. I think we should. My brother, who does know like about, but like a lot of people were saying that our coaching was, it was that we should have done had a different game plan than what we did. It just didn't look. Uh, yeah, it looked bad. Like we should have scored. There was like one up at the top. It was like I mean I think everybody thought we should have beat that team. Yeah, and then we would have played Messi, which would have been cool. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, seems like they played Messi in the game you guys are talking. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Boom! <laughs> Boom. Yeah, solid stuff yeah. right there. <laughs> that was pretty solid. Right well, I there. sat next to your brother Derek at the Vandy game, and he was giving me such a hard time about the World yeah. Cup, where I talked about the goal of the century, and I was like, Yeah, yeah, he basically just went down and kicked it in the net. He's yeah. like, that's all you said about it. And then he made a valid point about we're watching football. And he's like, a play lasts three to four seconds, and then there's like a 45-second wait for the next play in football. Yeah. Where in soccer, it's there's always something happening. Yeah. Well, that's what I like about our football is that wait. You get, you get to <laughs> reset. You know, There's a play happens, and it's a reset. With soccer, it is. It's too like hockey for me, too. It's like it's just, it's going, I mean, it's going the whole time. I need it's, breaks. Uh, After every four seconds, you need yeah, a break. Yes, I think I like it's like I like the idea that it was soccer though. It's like just it's it's a, almost a little just it's peaceful to watch. Like it's just kind of you know it's kind of always going and then they kick it in and then it's ah oh, super exciting. Oh, yeah, and then it's like you know it's like sometimes in football like when you it is like you you see a play and you've been waiting. You're like oh what's this gonna be? Then it's just like a one yard <laughs> falls right yeah. in the ground. You're like and you get sometimes you feel like you got to wait. You know, because watching football plays not work is the worst. Oh, yeah. Just seeing just, you know, three runs and the guy gets a yard. Up the middle Up the middle, time. tackled every time. And <laughs> yeah. you're like, oh, my gosh, dude. Like, this is awful. Well, when it doesn't work, it looks like it, like they do, there's no plan. Yeah. Because you have 12 pieces moving. And so if you like it, when a run up the middle can be so complex where it's like, what's well, supposed to be a zone read where the whole th- thing is supposed to flow – to the left or the right, and then you have it's it's you know your safeties and all this stuff, and then at the end it just looks like a bunch of guys just kind of ran into a pile together. Yeah, and you're like it doesn't look good. You're like, well, it, sometimes football doesn't look good. Yeah, but it, I, I think to me the soccer aspect is like I just don't like the theatrics that come with like the yeah. the, the flopping, slide the, tackles yeah. and all this. And you're like, and some of them are legit. Like I mean, because an ankle is like the hardest, like most sensitive part, like of your like yeah. I mean, it's crazy. But it's like I I just I don't like the idea that it's like oh I have to roll around until I see that guy reach into his pocket, and then it's like oh I did my thing like I don't like that part just just like, like well I feel like they do a pretty like the one thing with the World Cup is I agree too because that's what I was term as soccer is like you know they're on the ground they're screaming they're like you're like oh man I can't watch you're like I don't know who because they scream and you're like all right. You try to give the guy the benefit of the doubt, then he gets up and runs, and you're like, "Well, why did you scream?" And it's like they're trying to draw all this stuff. Uh, but the World Cup, I felt like they like it feels a little more like we ain't putting up with, you know, they fall and they scream, but it's like it feels like it kind of moves, like it's like, "Yeah, yeah, we're just keep going." Right. Uh, but I do agree. Soccer, I think, was known for being overly. Derek said they can they can. Uh, they can they can get you a card, a red card, and then kick you out or something. Like if you overdo it, yeah. Like if you're if if someone's flopping the whole time. I mean, the NBA started doing like that kind of flopping, where that that stuff really hurts a game. Oh, for sure. I mean, yeah. just, you don't you like. I mean, I remember watching when Russell Westbrook was in Oklahoma City. Uh, he tore his ACL and then he played the second half of a game. Like you're like, I want like that level of like toughness, or even like in football, I've seen dudes like have ankle injuries and they just go and get retaped and they come back into the game yeah. and it's like y'all just pause the game and it's like it's like i just i just want i want to see because also there there are tough dudes in soccer like i remember what was it like 10 years ago there was a guy that out of nowhere he just headbutted a dude yeah, in the yeah. chest and i was like all right like if soccer was more like that dude yeah. like i i would be so into yeah. it 
I think they might be, but and we don't know. Yeah, but let's bring they're... more headbutts in. I'm for. Well, I'm, just, yeah. I'm just. I'm just headbutts, saying that. Why? I'm for headbutts on all sports. Mm-hmm. And football well, players fake too. If a team's yeah. marching down the field, the defense will just collapse. Just yeah. slow it down. I tell you what, these football players with their, I just think they're getting uh, injured, like our, our uh, concussions or, I mean, dude, is it, it feels like it happens every game. Like someone yeah. gets hit and it's like just brutal. Like, oh, yeah. and I guess that is, they were saying they didn't point oh, before. <laughs> I don't know how to work it. Yeah. I don't know why there's volume on Yeah, yeah. We don't have to show it. Uh, well, but it was- it's, I think we did show it. We did last we week. We showed it yeah. in the World Cup thing. If you were, oh, you talked about the headbutt thing? I don't know. I'm sorry. Yeah. I don't know why. I, the, my volume's off here. I don't know why there's still volume to it. Yeah, yeah. It's all right. It's all right, buddy. Yeah. I'm new to working the computer. <laughs> this yeah. is the first uh, laptop I've ever touched. I just want you to know it was a topic that I brought up, so I appreciate you trying to yeah, do it. Yeah, really, Nate shut it down. I really appreciate you. You need to put a piece of tape over there? Yeah, I mean, they're watching me. <laughs> yeah. You like to let them know every now and again where you're at? Yeah, you know, I want them to think I live here. Yeah, yeah. You know, that way they won't come. <laughs> you want to say a few of that? Because you're on the, gr- you're <laughs> yeah. on the grind. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah, you want to tell them this is where I live? Yeah, I live yeah. here now in this room. Yeah. This is where I'm at there most of go. the time. <laughs> All right, there you go. They know. They know. My my mom watches the podcast. She said this picture behind me. She said you look like the guy from The Professional. You ever see that movie with a guy? Uh, I've seen it. I've never watched it, but yeah. it's uh, it's a great movie. Oh, yeah, fantastic. I need to watch it because it was like uh, it's him and a little girl, right? right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I see it's it Natalie all the time. Portman. Yeah. Oh yeah. Wow. And Gary Oldman's in it. Gary Oldman's yeah. like the yeah. best bad. guy. My mom like say you look like this guy in that picture. All right. The, the, the I like that. Professional. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Yeah. You look like the bad guy from the first Mission Impossible. I think it's this one. Oh. Mm-hmm. But yeah. Mm-hmm. I uh, like it. I like it. Thank you. Uh, Milton Mahdi. Coming from Europe, this episode was super fun to watch. The mistake mistakes made were horrendous. Don't get me wrong. But you guys, the guys either figured them out or simply moved on are exactly what we love about the podcast. On the other hand, when some of you mentioned something right, I was getting super excited and feeling happy for you. That's what you want. That's the right, right. attitude. All right, yeah. Milton, I appreciate that. Yeah. We had so many people say, I can't listen to this anymore. I'm too involved in it. You guys are just upsetting me. But Milton took it in stride. Yeah. Yeah, you got to not take Oh, they couldn't listen to the World Cup so upset because they were too, they're too, into the World Cup. Yeah, too yeah, involved. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. We're in, I'm involved. I've watched Pepe Sil- Sylvia. As someone who does watch the Tour de France every year, I find it very exciting to watch. I found trying to convince people to watch it is a fruitless endeavor. Endeavor. I'm not saying everyone should watch every stage in its entirety, but watching the last hour or so does the job. I could see that. Yeah. I think it's if you understood it. It's like it's it's like a lot of stuff. If you just if I knew everything that was going on. But what's there to know? I, mean, I think that's with soccer is like the leagues and even all that. Like I, I was talking to Chase or Merch about my son. Uh, <laughs> he uh, he he. I was talking to him about uh, the the leagues. I was like Messi and Ronaldo and like asking. It's it is. It's like there's a chimney. Like it's hard to explain it or you know and you know like when do they play? There it's like Barcelona and Real Madrid play. In this league, and I'm like, so they have a season, or they have the chance? You know, it's like, it just, uh, it's, it's. I think I would love it once I understood it, but it's just you gotta have the time. To- well, the idea, the one thing that I love about that soccer does is the 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 leagues that they're in. So if you perform poorly, they kick you out of the divisions. Mm. So I wish that would happen in college football, where yeah. it's like, hey, if you're like, because a lot of teams are kind of just grandfathered into a place, and you're like. Like Kansas for the longest time in the Big Twelve was just like, yeah, we're just gonna do whatever. We're gonna put all, all of our budget on basketball, and it's like, yeah, but it would be great if you could just contribute to this. Like the Big Ten is. So like you want too. Kansas kicked out of the Big Twelve? No, no, no. What I'm saying is, is that you it's, can't it's, keep it's, up. You're out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like well, that. in football, I think it's a thing because in basketball they're killing it, but it's like there's just no incentive for them to be good because it's like when at the end of football season they just break up the 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 money they make equally. Yeah. So there's no incentive. They just pocket all that money without putting any in. Yeah. So that's like the I like the soccer system of if you don't do well, then we demote you, and if you do well, we promote you. Yeah. I think you're taking a shot a little more than Kansas. <sighs> I wasn't gonna say. I mean, uh, I don't know who you could be. Then Kansas about. do good this year. I mean, I'm talking about Northwestern too. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Northwestern won a Rose Bowl. 
Bill Bridgeforth, and that was 100 years ago, but <laughs> Bill Bridgeforth, you guys didn't even mention the best part about watching soccer. No commercials. They play an entire half without stopping. It's hard to go back to football and see the same ads every five minutes. I agree with that. I didn't realize that. That is a That's a awesome. big encouragement. For me yeah. to watch soccer. I hate It's straight up 45 minutes. So you like, I mean, well, in the added time or whatever, but it's like that's only a few minutes. But it's it's like just, it is nice to be like clock starts, game starts, and you just sit there and watch it. And then halftime, you can go do whatever you want to do and come back second half, you watch it. It, it is great. I love how they it's like, great. I like. I love not seeing commercials and they have the jersey just filled with. Things oh on. yeah, their jerseys are. There's ads yeah. going around the thing, but it's like I'm. I'd be. I'd be like. I'd, I'd that. do that. I'll yeah. take it. I mean, the way the NFL is like doing that half and half screen now makes me furious because I feel like they just added more commercials. Right. And so they're like they can get away with it more. Like, oh, this counts. You're getting to. We'll show you both. You're like, I, I, I yeah. Yeah, and then Crazy. no music at halftime anymore. I'm done with that too. No bands at halftime. Yeah, I don't know. I enjoyed the. They had like a a crazy band for the Mexico City. It was like a. Uh, it was like a, a, a like what's the brass like a marachi band. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, but it was, I'm it into was that. More, it was, it's the bigger one. Okay. It's the, but there was like 18 people on stage, and I was are you like, talking about Monday Night Football? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was I'm, like, this is chaos. I love it so I'm, much. I'm into that, but like the Jonas Brothers were doing one. I was yeah. watching, and I'm like, I, I don't. Yeah, I mean, I'm not. I'm not trashing the Jonas Brothers, but I'm not. I don't care. I'm watching the football game. You should make it. stuff more for just you. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's not uh, like you're talking about Thanksgiving. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, most, it's not necessary. I don't yeah, need yeah. it. It's the it's Super not, Bowl and Thanksgiving. Yeah, they should know. Yes. Dusty doesn't. Like I that. don't know any. No, I didn't see anybody going. Man, I love that Jonas Brothers at halftime. <laughs> but if uh, Waylon Jennings came out, like, <laughs> yeah, well, that'd be different. That yeah, would. Well, be they true. should do more stuff like that. Uh, I'll agree with that. I will agree with that. Royale, we we cheese. <laughs> Dusty's wife's story about her childhood soccer team is essentially the plot of the movie Little Giants. They might have took it from her. Yeah. I mean, Rick Moranis was in that, right? Little yeah, Giants? Yeah. He's Canadian. So he might have, for all I know, he stole that idea. That's from, true. You know? Get to the bottom of that. All right. Uh, holiday shopping comments. You skipped one. Oh, one more. World Cup comments. Rena Camps. Rena Camps. Hey, guys, I'm an American living in, in Qatar. Been here since 2018. Qatar is a pretty cool place. And there's so much incorrect stuff floating around on the internet about it. Alcohol is available here. Wow. And has been for at least the last decade. It's not just sold as widely. It's just not sold as. Oh, widely. it's just not sold as wide, wide widely, wildly. Uh, women can sunbathe at hotel beaches and even the beachfront neighborhood I live in. It's pretty, uh, pretty amazing living here. Nice people and so safe. Nate, you could come do a show here. Yeah, look at that. I'm in. I love it. Well, she didn't mention you, but uh, well, she did. <laughs> yeah. I'm just letting you know, though. I'm in, though. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm in. It does I'm seem in. like your kind of place, though. Doesn't yeah. It? I mean, I'm. Yeah. I mean, I'll go. I mean, if you, you know, if you need someone, I guess they have some an or something. Emir. I said king last week, but someone said it's an emir is mm-hmm. the ruler. So. They go, and uh, it's the last we ever heard of Raina. she's like you can do everything she's been doing all the roll roll. they're like no 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 we never said that a van pulls up just throws her in the back right when she hits sin on this comment she's like i gotta knock on my door i'll be right back guys (laughs) uh no that's that's great to hear that is crazy if they they, the alcohol is available there like how it is just like why are people uh, it just feels like stuff gets spread around. Yeah, that's like, oh, a great place. Well, I think they it's people wanting some. I they I think people want the World Cup to come to their country. Yeah. So if like if I can make a region look bad, mm-hmm. then that means that oh the, we're gonna be more like city yeah, focused yeah. or yeah. And I and yeah I'm every everywhere has got problems. Everybody's got. I, but it, it's nice to hear that. Uh, holiday shopping comments. The dot names dot rach. I've lo- I've listened to Nate Land podcast since the first episode, but I laughed so hard during the most recent holiday shopping episode that I had an asthma attack. And now I plan only to listen to the podcast when I'm near my inhaler. All right. You got to be careful. You got to be careful. Change, we're out here changing lives. Yes. Uh, Marky Quinn. I worked for a Bed Bath & Beyond, and a manager would change the music the last hour we were open to polka music. He called it the polka power hour. Yes, people do shop faster when they hate the music. Mm. 
It's a good uh, way to get people out of there. Good way to get them out. Sure, Bed Bath & Beyond appreciate it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I had no idea Polka had that power, you know? Well, yeah. Pol- I feel like Polka is like fun. Like I feel like I would stay longer. Because like I grew up like, in the town. Well, I'm that sure I- it backfires on some, yeah. some guy. Like, <laughs> yeah. And then he calls his Finally. buddies. Calls his buddies. And all the people that like polka that are definitely not buying anything, <laughs> they're just in there like, finally, dude, get it out in the open. Randy Cyber, the nonfiction discussion hits on a sore point for me, unsweet tea. It blows my mind that unsweet tea is a thing in our vernacular. No one took the sweet out of it, like skim milk. It's the original thing. I ordered a sweet tea for my wife and an unsweet for me, and mine will be marked diet on the cup lids. As you can tell, this is a bit of a deal for me. Uh, all right. Oh, unsweet. But it wouldn't it be just called tea? I think that's his point, Ice right? Oh. Yeah. But I think, it, you know, in the South, I mean, my, I, I don't know. I believe most people want sweet tea. So you have to say sweet or unsweet. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. unsweet. Like you're taking the sweet out of you. Like, no, no, no. They're not. Well, yeah. They're serving you the original yeah. iced tea. Right. I'm the original. Why should I have to have this special word? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree with this guy, but when I waited tables, it would irritate me if people would just say tea. Because I'm like, sweet or unsweet? Yeah. You know, what tea do you want here? Yeah, yeah. You got to know your, it's the environment that you're yeah. in. If you're in the South, you're going to have to say unsweet or sweet. Right. And then everywhere else, you just say, I'd like an iced tea. Because we would make sweet tea and unsweet tea in the morning. And usually we would never have to make a new unsweet <laughs> tea. But we would make many, many sweet teas. Yeah. 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 It's good. Uh, Allison Kikala. C. Kala. Dusty, so many times in this episode, I want to reach you the screen and high five you. We got commonalities. All right. Thanks, Allison. There you go. I'll give you a high Can five I do one for Allison? This boom. is Allison's. Oh, boom. Yeah, you sure. really pulled it back on me, though. I, well, I, was, so. I was trying to. Look, I was, <laughs> yeah, I was yeah. playing the camera. <laughs> yeah. <over here>. Just <laughs> talking to Aaron. Allison, you've got to see that high five on Aaron Lane. <laughs> That high five will air on Aaron Lane. <laughs> uh, Andrew Hall. I worked at the Military Museum in Dayton, Ohio. Dusty's experience is very common. Guns and knives are prohibited on federal property. The security staff most likely realized that you return to the entrance faster than if you would have gone back to your car. They typically search for the knives, hidden or buried, because they do not want a child to get a hold of it. Ooh. Played this for a few of them, and they thought it was hilarious because it happens almost hourly. Wow. Yeah, I mean, I knew they got it. Yeah. I felt like I saw the guy heading out there, like, right away to get it. So... I bet it was Andrew. To do this would be to go dig it in the hole and then take a minute. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Sit on the park bench. I mean, because that parking lot is so far, yeah. I'm like, it's not even worth it. Yeah. If I go back to the car, I won't see the museum yeah. today. Yeah. Why don't you just throw it? I guess. I could, I could yeah. have just went out there and just chunked it out in the yeah. parking lot. <laughs> I think you're like a field or something. Yeah. That's crazy that they found it, though. Yeah, I mean, I think they just watched me the whole time. Yeah, yeah. You come back with dirty hands. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And they're yeah. like, but weren't they already dirty? They go, they are, but they're dirty. This <laughs> boy's fresh dirt. <laughs> I think when we went, Ricky had some weapons on him, and he just flipped a something, and they're like, oh, come on through. Like, yeah. Ricky's got a pass. Ricky's got a badge. Oh, yeah. Okay. And they go, come on in. <laughs> Mason Downing, I was the hay bear at Nate's Mobile Show. I was waiting for my wife to leave the restroom, and after making nice with security, I was or, I was offered a knife. I can only assume it was Dusty's, and I will return it if needed. Thanks again for coming our way. All right. I don't hay think bear. I lost one in Mobile, so they let you in most places. Yeah, in Mobile I like that. That's the difference of doing shows in Mobile, where you're, the security <laughs> will give you weaponry. <laughs> right. In Mobile, they're like, do you have a knife on you? You're like, yeah, no. no. And they're like, all right. Yeah. All right. Here you're you gonna, go. You may need we, it. We'd like everybody to have a knife on <laughs> Are you armed? That's, no. Well, we're going to fix that. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Uh, Mizzen and Maine. We are loving Mizzen and Maine dress shirts. Uh, with how much c- c- we travel, it is good to have a shirt that is wash and wear with no wrinkles. Comedians are not known for packing everything neat but we still like to look nice. Uh, it is also amazing not to go, have to go to the dry cleaners. Uh, and my wife wrote that because I've never been in the dry cleaners. <laughs> She's saying it's amazing that I don't have to go to the dry. Uh, it's, 
I, I do love this shirt. It's it is it just hangs. It's a nice shirt to have that you could wear it. I mean, you could go play like I say, play football in it if you wanted to. But it, it looks great. I think it's important to look nice. I've begin, I've, I've turned into that. I'm on that thing right now, even though I'm wearing a Sage Valley hoodie. Uh, that is what you have uh, to go check out at Mizzen and Maine, the inventors of the performance fabric dress shirt. Mizzen and Maine combines the <coughs> comfort and flexibility of our favorite athletic wear with the fit and style of a custom dress shirt. Basically, they make really comfortable dress shirts that you need to try to believe. I can tell you firsthand, uh, shirts, like I said, they're uh, the best, and uh, I've worn them. I've worn them on stage. Uh, dress shirt is that they are machine washable, which is great. That means no more expensive trips, like we said, the dry cleaners. Uh, plus, for the cold weather, they have got amazing flannels, pants, sweaters, and jackets made from that same Miz and May material that they have become famous for. So, if you want the best cold weather clothing this holiday season, check out Miz and Maine right now. If you go to Miz and Maine and use promo.com and use promo code Nate, you will receive $35 off any regular price order of $125 or more. That is $35 off when you go to M-I-Z-Z-E-N-A-N-D-M-A-I-N, mizzenandmain.com, and use our promo code Nate. Also, uh, True Bill, uh, our uh, Rocket Money. Now, <laughs> what, yeah, is that the same thing? No, they were. They, used they to changed. Be. Yeah, they changed it. All right, <laughs> formerly known as True Bill. Yeah, there yeah. You go. <laughs> uh, get rid of useless subscriptions with the Rocket Money now. Laura and I found out that we had a couple of double subscriptions, so it was great that Rocket Money noticed that. I think I have even more. I'm, I've got to uh, look at it again. I feel like I'm adding some in, yeah. so I need to go run through uh, a nice Rocket Money. Uh, do you know how, your, how much uh, your subscriptions really cost? Most Americans think they spend around $80 a month on subscriptions when the actual total is closer to $200 plus. That cutting the cord gets expensive. Everybody thinks they do it, mm -hmm. and you're like, oh, I'm saving money, and then you're like, you got money going who knows where. Uh, you could be wasting hundreds of dollars each month on subscriptions you do not even know about. There is this app I love using that takes care of that for me. It is called Rocket Money, formerly known as Truebill. The app shows all your subscriptions in one place and cancels what you do not want for you, uh, and cancels what you do not want for you. Uh, Rocket Money can even find subscriptions you d uh, did not know you were paying for. Uh, get rid of useless, useless subscriptions with Rocket Money now. Go to rocketmoney.com slash Nate. Seriously, it could save you hundreds per year. That is rocketmoney.com slash Nate. This holiday season, if you're looking for a unique gift that inspires curiosity, travel, and culture, give the gift of Babbel. Babbel is the language learning app that sold more than 10 million subscriptions. Thanks to Babbel's addictively fun and easy bite-sized language lessons, you'll finally be able to discover the wonder that comes with learning a new language. Justin, do you speak another language? Uh, I know bits and pieces of stuff. All right. Well, with Babbel, you can learn it all. In just 10 minutes, you can complete a lesson. <laughs> Other languages, learning apps use AI for their lessons plans. Dusty, we're, we're not down with this. No, no. We don't want AI teaching us anything. No, we don't. Babbel lessons were created by over 150 humans, language experts. With Babbel, you can choose 14 different languages. Um, and here's the thing. Over Thanksgiving, my wife came to visit the Bates. She's not from the South. There was a lot of translations. I might get my wife oh, the Bates yeah. family translation mm. just, just for the holidays. <laughs> <laughs> my family, when someone's about to cry, they said, they're about to tune up to cry. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> my wife's like, why is they tune up? I don't know. But that's what we say. But right now with Babbel, uh, you can start your new language learning journey today. Get up to 55% off your subscription when you go to babble.com slash Nate. That's babble.com slash Nate for up to 55% off your subscription. Babble, language for life. I mean, oh. you you threw it to me right in the middle of that ad read. And I was like, oh, we're moving on to a different topic. And I was like, oh, I didn't know we were going. Because I was like, <laughs> I was like, all right, I'm going to start a whole thing. Well, and, and it was just, and it was just. I just no, no, no. try to throw a curveball in there. <laughs> well, our next, our next product, our next partner, right, has a product we've started using every day. So this is how you started out. Yeah, right here. we all started taking Athletic Greens because none of us eat very well. Okay, but we're looking for simple ways to try to be more healthy. This is a great start to the morning. The special blend of ingredients supports your gut health, your nervous system, your immune system, your energy recovery, 
focus, and aging. The taste is great and easy to make and drink quickly. Just one scoop of powder with water, shake, and drink. Travel packs are great for when any of us are on the road. You can easily pour into a bottle of water or any kind of drink, really. Contains less than one gram of sugar, no GMOs, no nasty chemicals, or anything artificial. Supports better sleep quality and recovery and also mental clarity and alertness. It is cheaper than getting all the different supplements yourself, and it costs less than $3 a day. Right now, it's time to reclaim your health and help your immune system with convenient daily nutrition, especially heading into the flu and cold season. It's just one scoop and a cup of water (laughs) every day. That is is it. No need for a million different pills and supplements to look out for your health. To make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash Nate. Again, that's athleticgreens.com slash Nate to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance boom man you can so good at I'm that i'm telling he's nailing it uh so this week no, i just changed it'd be <laughs> funny not to uh i got i was very hot that's not like you no usually you're cold i'm usually cold uh but that the sweatshirt say you it's a great sweatshirt but it's it's a hot sweatshirt and i had uh some sweatpants Kind of on that were can be hot. Kind of on. And uh, I had them on the whole way. I pulled yeah. them up, actually, because I was hot. And I was just too hot. And I was like, man, I'm not going ma- to make, like, make it. So I changed it up. I also all that, this all that M- guitar talk. I have this MIT hat. And uh, I was given this. I, I forget the uh, young lady's name. But she said she listened to a lot of, uh, she listens, I think this podcast listens to a lot of my comedy uh, when she was trying to, and she graduated from MIT. Wow. And so she would listen to a lot of it. Uh, and it says very nicely, helped her get through it. And I thought it was very cool. So I'm in, I'm in my tea. All right. In my tea material. I'm in my tea. It's, uh, you had that doctor tell you you were a genius. I mean, you're just, you're racking up the, yeah. the brainiacs here. In my tea, it's like, uh, M15. What's the thing from Impossible? Mission Impossible. Yeah. She's one of them now. She is? No, I don't know. <laughs> Isn't that called MI5? I think, yeah. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. MI5. What's yeah. oh like the British Agency. intelligence? Yeah, yeah. It starts with MIT. Yeah, <laughs> so go to passed, MIT. She goes to MIT. She when made she it. Got the T. Yeah. One day she'll get to a five. Yeah. Just go to numbers. You got to do it s- several times until so she finally gets to Z, and then they go, "Welcome to the numbers." Yes. <laughs> MI five. MI- and isn't that yeah. where uh, Matt Damon's character in Goodwill Honey went? Was he in a janitor at MIT? Sure. Mm-hmm. Sure. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just solving pro- equations in there. Equations. Just late night solving equations. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Classic. Uh, Blue collar genius. Yeah. You think anybody will notice if I start writing on this chalkboard? You know, like, yeah. <laughs> this little hobby of mine, just finishing equations. Yeah. Uh, this week, uh, we're talking about a very fun topic World War II. Well, All we're right. going to make it fun. All right. So today, uh, this, this comes out is Pearl Harbor Day. Ooh. Oh, okay. Pearl Harbor uh, Day. Yeah. A, a few birthdays, too. Big J birthday. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, I want to say Patrice O'Neill's birthday was the seventh. My uh, buddy Ryan, uh, his birthday, and uh, Wayne. And the, I talk about them in the special Wayne Denton, the Dentons, his birthday. Oh, that's a lot great. of December 7th birthdays. That's great. All right. Yeah. Well, that's about all I had. All, all right. right. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Pearl Harbor Day. And so, so I would be willing to bet that most Americans, myself included, did not know why Japan attacked us at Pearl Harbor. Uh, I, I think I do. Do you guys know? Nah. Did you go to Pearl Harbor when you were in Hawaii? Yeah. Okay. They were mad about us using forks. Mm. Good guess, but no. No. I mean, I don't know. They I'm see sure a shovel. S- I'm That's sure the old Seinfeld joke. Yeah, <laughs> he goes it's the Chinese, but the Chi- oh about, yeah, about uh, using chopsticks. Chopsticks. <laughs> How they don't see he goes. You know, you don't see a guy out there in the farm with two pool pool cues. <laughs> yeah, he goes. I mean, they got shovels. They don't see that. <laughs> I've seen that. Yeah. yeah. There you go. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> do you know uh, why? I mean, I I do I, think I, I know because I watched or I did or something. Was it something to? Uh, with uh, uh, Germany, or 
Like, was it trying to, they were trying to, they were in on it together to try to take over the world? Well, that, that's what I would think most people would, would uh, guess. I thought I was going to be in the other category. I'm in the most people's. Well, it doesn't have to do with oil reserves. Like, we, we were shifted our, instead of doing deals with Japan, we started sending all of our oil and stuff to fight, like, or we're sending them to aid England. Uh, you're getting closer. Um, so. Nerd alert, Justin. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Uh, Mar- I got to have opinions that match this jacket. Yeah. So uh, Japan had his own little war going on with China, Ooh. which is kind of crazy now. People don't really it. talk about that very often. No, yeah. I bet they do. They were, yeah, but, but that was happening. Yeah. I watch a lot of Kung Fu movies. They always reference it. Do they? <laughs> yeah. Wow. Huh. You watch like just Kung, like what? Well, like Ip Man. You ever see Ip Man? No. I, it's IP Man, but it's, it's pronounced Ip, Master Ip. It's great. It's the best Kung Fu movies out there. Is it? Apparently, he trained Bruce Lee. Oh, wow. So it's not very old. Yeah. Well, it's not very... They've redone it. Donnie Yen is the guy. And they've done like five of them. It's really great. Yeah. It's the best. If you like kung fu fights, a lot of times the fights will be all broken up and weird. I mean, these are straight on, and it's it's the best you can get. Yeah. Mike Tyson's in one. Oh, wow. Is it better than Ung Bak? I think so. Because that one's one's crazy. Like That was like the first time they ever did like the dust kicks. Where they put like like they put powder on somebody's chest, and so when you make contact, it looks like the contact is a lot bigger. So it's like a yeah. whole it, it's like bananas, and so yeah, yeah. I mean, it man fights Mike Tyson. There was not much to that. Oh, well, so, well, you you ruin it for us. No, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna tell you what happens in the fight, but they do yeah. fight. Okay. Well, Kareem Abdul Jabbar was in one of them. What is it? I haven't even heard of this. And this well, not the, the, not the biggest fans of not it man, but didn't Kareem fight Bruce Lee? Oh, I didn't know about I don't know that. about this. Ooh. I think so. Well, you know, the problem with Bruce Lee's movies is they say that he was so fast that the cameras of that time couldn't keep up with his speed. So he had to slow down to, to be able to be filmed. I mean, wow. I feel like that's something he wrote. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, that could be he true, He goes, I too. bet you can't get me. He goes, no, we're good. We're good. He goes, we're good. We're, we got all of it. He goes, I saw what you did with your toes. I They're saw like, your toes move. Yeah. <laughs> They're like, you keep goes, missing. He's yeah. like, no, no, no. I did it. It was so fast. You you just. Yeah. The yeah. camera's not getting it. Yeah. yeah. So basically. <laughs> I sign my name with my big toe. You don't get that? Like when I kick, I go uh, sign it. Yeah. They miss it. You can't they get it. it. Yeah. You can't get it. Yeah. Germany had its own war going on in Europe. The Japan was trying to take over the South Pacific and they were fighting with with China and taking over some other islands. So the only thing they felt like could really stop them was the United States' uh, fleet of Navy ships in the South Pacific. Yeah. So they're like, we go take them out. Nobody's going to get in our way. So they did a surprise attack because they thought, we can't beat them head to head, but if we surprise attack, take out their fleet, then they won't be able to stop us. I, that, I did know that. So. <laughs> I think I did. Yeah. So I, I don't know I, if I could have I, said it. I believe yeah. you. I believe you did. I couldn't have come up with the words for it. But. <laughs> did you go to the USS Arizona? Uh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's the main one. Is it Tucson? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. All right. Yeah, but yeah. it's it's. Uh, well, I haven't been, but it sounds pretty. It's good. Pretty. Is it? Amazing. They well, they have like we didn't get to go out to the thing. We went like before the show, so we went late. But we walked on the submarine. You went down in that. All right. Is that the U.S.? That's not it. I wouldn't think so, no. Yeah. I think the U.S.S. They Arizona a, is... They have a memorial in the middle yeah. of the thing. We didn't get to go out there. Yeah. But we saw I've, where it was. It's crazy. It's it's bananas. It's wild. It's, yeah, I mean, the whole thing's... It's 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 very wild. Yeah, it's crazy. Over 2,000 men were killed that day. Yeah, it's People crazy. killed that day. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uplifting. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get into some fun stuff then right out of the gate. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I mean, yeah. <laughs> uh, I was gonna. I thought we talk about Hitler a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I had some family in World War II. My wow. my grand my grandmother, my mom's mom's first husband was killed in World War II. Golly. I mean, these two together today. Were they? Uh, <laughs> was your family? Were they not in the military? They went on their own. Yeah, they just went. Yeah, they just went over there. Figured they did. Yeah. They go. We'll yeah, well, they were like, we can't get drafted. Let's just go yeah, help. Let's just go help. Yeah. <laughs> but no, he uh, was killed there. And then I have an uncle that's his. That was his dad. But then my grandmother remarried, and then my grandfather got injured in I think in boot camp or in training camp for World War One. Wow. And then my uncle, my dad, my dad's 
dad was born in 1900 and he's my, and he had my dad when he was 47. So wow. he had other kids and my oldest uncle was in World War II and he was uh, injured. He got a purple heart and he, uh, my dad was just telling me this recently that he like, he, I don't know who the enemy was in this particular fight, but apparently my dad, my uncle opened a door and the enemy shot and killed the guy behind him. Golly. And he said he almost, he said he came home and he told his mom, he said, I almost starved to death and I'll never let that happen again. And then he got real big. Wow. He ate a lot. But then he was a chiropractor. How big would you say? Uh, Well, I don't want to throw out numbers out here. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) No, but he was, you know, probably 400 pounds, you know, I don't. I mean, so like a good healthy amount. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like a perfectly <laughs> average amount. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I, you know, he didn't talk about the uh, like. He comes home, he goes, "Man, I almost starved to death." Oh, by the way, I almost got shot in the face by the guy yeah. behind me. <laughs> yeah, like that was this other thing well, that he got brought. Up. My dad always would talk about the the food thing. How yeah. he, but just over Thanksgiving, he told me that about the uh, the shooting and that he had a purple heart. He had wow. never shared that. Wow. I had a joke where I said I never had any family in the military, but my sister did one tour with the Dollar General, you know? <laughs> yeah. And it's like, but I... You have war heroes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, so that's my whole wow. World War II. That's all my family. That's what Man, they were up to. That's crazy. Yeah. Well, that's awesome. Well, after Pearl Harbor, this guy here uh, in America came up with an idea to strap miniature bombs to bats and drop them over Japanese cities. And it made it to the desk of Franklin Roosevelt. And he's like, you know what? This isn't a bad idea. Let's look into it. Everybody thought it was crazy, but he liked it. So he assigned the Air Force to try to make this happen. So the first job they had to do was figure out what species of bat would be best to use. Not the one that has COVID. (laughs) Right. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) Um, So they started... They stopped everything they were. This is the U.S. Air Force in the middle of a war. Stopped everything we're doing. Start traveling around the country trying to figure out what type of bat to use to strap miniature bombs to. Um, so they visited thousands of caves and 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 a bunch of mines. They finally settled on the Mexican free-tailed bat. Free-tailed bat. Mexican free-tailed bat. It was the most plentiful type of bat. And they said these Japanese buildings were mostly um, wooden, so they they have the bat land on it. Bomb goes off, causes chaos. That was their plan. So then they get to get permission from the National Park Service to, even back then, it's the U.S. government, got to get permission <laughs> yeah. from the Park Service to collect these bats, thousands of free tail bats. So they, cal- they catch them with some nets, and now they got to experiment. The National Parks was like, yeah, that's fun. Yeah. I guess so, yeah. Yeah. You got too many of those things out here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Hey guys, we're at I war. wonder if they really told them what for. <laughs> Why? Nothing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They'll come back. Yeah, don't worry about it. Don't worry about what's happening. <laughs> Shipping them to Japan. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so then they got to test them. So the bats can only carry roughly their own body weight, which to me is pretty impressive. They say like it's a bad thing. I mean, they can, yeah, they, uh, and they can almost, they they can barely carry. They their, can roughly carry their own oh, body weight. Is how it was worded. Man, that's a rough life. <laughs> yeah, which is every day is like, <laughs> uh, just I mean, he, like it's just a hassle. We no, carry that, our mean, body. that means like if you carried another 165 pounds on your back. Oh, I thought it meant just their body. <laughs> yeah, like no, 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 no. Every morning's like, golly, I gotta <laughs> lose weight. Like you gotta. <laughs> He just gets going <laughs> slow, like his belly just, his wings are, and his belly just on the ground, just dragging. He's like, I ain't going to get upside down. <laughs> just falls straight to the ground. Uh, so then the plan was, take them up in an airplane, fly them over Japan, drop them from a, some type of carrier on a, from a, a uh, parachute. And keep, they said keep the airplane really cold because then the bats will hibernate and they won't cause as much trouble while they're flying there. Open a window on that plane. Yeah. Up that high. <laughs> That's how you do it. That's what I would, I would say that in the meeting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Open a window. <laughs> you don't need a, they're like, well, how much refrigeration going to cost? Open a window. Yeah. <laughs> so 20,000 feet up in the air. It's like minus 50 up there. Yeah. That's why they got to wear those jackets. Yeah. Yeah. Then I do a fist bump with uh, <laughs> the guy next to Roosevelt. 
Niggas good. <laughs> niggas. Next, next problem. Yeah. It'd be hard to shoot it down when they're like, well, our plan right now is to strap bombs to bats. Yeah. So <laughs> let's go with the open window idea. I think you could have probably told Japan we're doing this, and they would probably be like, all right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like no one's. I ain't worried about it. it. Yeah, this is the most not top secret one you have to, you get like, you not tell anybody, they go, we're telling, tell everybody, because no one's going to see this coming. <laughs> yeah. I mean, could you imagine being a Japanese pilot, and you shoot at a plane, and you make holes, and all of a sudden just bats just start flying out of the holes? Like, it's like bleeding bats almost. Yeah. Mm. And I'm guessing since we later drop an atomic bomb, the bats weren't successful. Well, let's not get ahead. Yeah, of you're stuff. getting ahead of us okay. here, Dusty. Well, we don't know that you know it wasn't a bat. The deli- I mean, no. we don't <laughs> uh, know that's that. True. Well, that is true. They found a bigger bat. Yeah, that is true. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. I, got, I think we're going to need a bigger bat. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so they start testing it, and the plan was drop them in a carrier. After the carrier gets a certain level, the door opens. The bats, which are still asleep because they're hibernating, they fall out, and then they wake up. You got to walk back there. If you got to go to the bathroom. You got to go to the bathroom. You got to go. It's minus 50. Go. You don't want to wake up. What happens if they wake up? They have bombs. <laughs> yeah. Not only is it, is it bats. It's a bat. <laughs> Already. Non-bombed. You don't want a bat flying around your head with a bomb yeah i mean just mark- these guys can barely get their <laughs> even body up in the air <laughs> you know from a marketing standpoint bat bomb is just the per- it rolls right it off good. the top yeah. yeah it does yeah probably created batman <laughs> I, I, I would be yeah. surprised so the bats were supposed to wake up while they're falling and then they were going to release them right at dawn. That's when bats roost. They would all land on these Japanese buildings. And after 30 seconds, the bomb would detonate and it caused chaos. So they tested it um, out in New Mexico. And the bats kept not waking up. They would just hit the ground, still asleep. Would the bomb yes. go off? At one time, the bomb went off and burned an air base in New Mexico, caught it on fire. Yes. I imagine there's one guy during this meeting that uh, <laughs> is you know thinks it's stupid and so when as we're having a serious conversation he's just like why don't you call batman and see what he thinks idiots and they're like john get out of here we're having a serious conversation about this bat bombing and we want to talk it yeah through. if you're not gonna take it serious he won't take it serious oh gosh he goes what if catwoman shows up you're like get john uh so it was called project x-ray by the way so they kept trying they they created fake Japanese cities at test sites in Utah, but um, it just never would. Something kept happening. The bats wouldn't cooperate. Why do they got to go to Utah and New Mexico? Like that's the that's probably the government spending to go. Well, you're already in them. Just do it all there. And they're like, well, let's go. Let's fly to Utah. Sounds like they wanted to burn down a thing in New Mexico. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds like they were like, we got to figure out how to get rid of this base. Yeah. Well, it didn't work. They never even tried it. Finally, they're like, let's just move on. This another guy's got. I got another idea. How about atomic bombs? So it never happened. That's where they went from bat bombs to atomic bombs. Yep. They started. They were like, these little bombs aren't going to (laughs) work. Is that real? Yeah, that's real. I mean, I'm not saying it was quite like that, but they were also working on atomic bomb. These bats weren't cooperating. They kept dying when they hit the ground. So they're finally like, yeah, they were frozen. I mean, yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> sound like you're blaming the bats. <laughs> yeah. These bats apparently <laughs> hate their country. These stupid bats. Well, maybe get American bats and not Mexican yeah. bats, and then they would have really given it a go. You know, you go to you go. You're like, oh, we got these France bats. For some reason, they're not on our side. <laughs> right? Yeah, you're trying to get Mexico to fight for America. They're yeah. like, no, we're not no, doing dude, this, I'm not buddy. doing that. Just fall to the ground. Yeah, that's what they said. Yeah. Just fall to the ground. Park Service is like, hey, how the bats doing? Yeah. They were Mexican bats, uh, yeah. but they found them in America, so they got here somehow. You wouldn't give me a blanket, and now you want me to work for you? Like, it's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, the bats knew. They were like, this is a bomb strapped yeah, to yeah. us. Yeah. I just love the title of the the name is like the, the X-ray. It's like you literally have bat bomb would be the perfect yeah. name. It would be. And you go, no, 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 we're going to call it X-ray. Call it yeah. X-ray because everybody can see through this plane. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it, it, I could see the atomic bomb, too making it you get to that point of frustration that goes just do the whole thing <laughs> like they you know yeah. what do you yeah. mean your frustration of just these you probably months and oh yeah doing this the bat doesn't work and you go what do you want us to do he goes i got one that does the whole thing no bat <laughs> yeah we can put a bat on it if you want probably stay <laughs> yeah 
Yeah. You got to meet in the middle. He's like, I don't know. He goes, I'll put 50 bats on it. And he goes, all right. <laughs> yeah, we got the bats. I don't want to return these bats. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I don't want to take it all yeah. the way back. I mean, it does, parks, it does yeah. feel very rival scientist-y where it's like two guys are sitting there. It's like, all right, I finally got the you know bat thing to work. And the guy next to him was like, what if we just do the atomic bomb thing? And you're like, I just, I just got it to work. Yeah. <laughs> I just fixed the bat thing. Yeah. I just fixed it. Let's try ours first. Well, uh, uh, in Britain, they had a one called Operation Mincemeat. Mm. And I learned mm. about this from our new intern, Amelia. Amelia oh. found this. Yeah. Hey. And this, there's a Netflix movie about this that came out this year. So they uh, wanted to attack Sicily, but they wanted to trick the Germans into thinking they were actually going to attack Greece so that the Germans would lower down the guard. So they found a homeless guy who had died from eating rat poison and they put an uh, uh, officer uniform on him, and then they put a bunch of like stuff on him, looked like he was a real person. And then they also put some secret plans in his pocket, like, hey, we're about to attack. Uh, Wait, I'm, I, I, I've checked out, and I don't. I've not checked out. You said Amelia's the intern now. Helping. <laughs> <laughs> I was back to that. Yeah. Wow, we really got to back up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, I, I got think. stuck at a homeless guy dying from eating rat poison. That's yeah. where I got trailed. Well, off. you're a little bit headed, yeah. Nate, but yeah. All right, so I'm, yeah, what, which part do you want to cover? Say it again, just real quick. Real All quick. right, Amelia's the new intern, uh, helping. Thank you, Amelia. Yes. Uh, I don't want to mess up her. You know, this is her first thing. That's right. Um, <clears throat> so they were trying. The British were trying to deceive the Germans. They wanted to attack Sicily. They wanted the Germans to think Hold they were. On, let me, because I, I then now I can't quit thinking about how funny it is that someone's listening, and they're like, I gotta, they gotta listen to multiple times. <laughs> <laughs> this just happened like an episode or two ago. Yeah, I know. That's you I mean, keep that's turning yeah, the car around. The fact that <laughs> <laughs> can make that you. God bless all y'all that listen to this podcast, because I it, it can't a part of the podcast can't be we hear. <laughs> they have to say it a few times. That's the part that's hard to get through. <laughs> I mean, it's like trying to find parking in, during the holidays in yeah. a parking lot. You just got to keep circling. Got to keep circling. To you get, get that, if you, if, you, if you can't handle this, just there's a 10-second <laughs> button or something, right? 15 second, just yeah. I think it's 30, but it's been about 30. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. At least. Yeah. yeah. Start now. So click it now. You I click it a couple seconds. times. We're saying Brian has 30 seconds to re-explain it. Okay. So <laughs> click. <laughs> yeah. Click 30 seconds. Ready? Brian, go. All right. They found a homeless guy who died from eating rat poison. I'll explain that to you later, Dusty, <laughs> okay, after okay. the 30 seconds. So they dressed him up as an officer, and then um, they put a bunch of stuff on him to make him look like, you know, he's like legit officer. They put like a uh, theater stub for where he'd just been and a watch and stuff like that. And they also put some plans in there that said the British were going to attack Greece. And their plan was for Germany to find it, and it would trick them into doing that. 30 seconds. All right. Welcome back. <laughs> there you go. So um, so then they they had to – they couldn't make it obvious. Like they can't just drop the guy in on Germany's doorstep. So they, so they had to take him out to the uh, water and let him go and let him float up to Spain. <laughs> Spain hmm. was neutral during – They just put him in the water? They, I haven't seen the movie, but I think they took him out on a boat and just let him go, and, and they knew he put would some, float. Just like the, Moses. Yeah. Float put some bats on him. <laughs> yeah. Had the yeah. bats drag him. Yeah. They put him somewhere they knew he would wash up shore in Spain, yeah. and they put all this stuff on him. And then you go lay him on the beach in Spain, and then they go, is that a guy? Someone walks up there and goes, is there a guy out there sleeping on the beach? <laughs> <laughs> just sees him. He goes, I think so. He goes, maybe you should check it out. I don't know. Maybe he's got a note in his pocket. And he just takes off right <laughs> Make sure you send the message home. Uh, so they did this. They turned him loose in the water. It washed up on shore in Spain. Then they had a hope that Spain would do what they wanted, which was to give this stuff over to Germany and not just be like, oh, we found this guy and return him back to Britain. But Spain fell for it too. They did what they wanted and they gave the plan. Why would they turn the guy back to Britain, even if they did find him? Well, I mean, because he was listed as a British citizen, so I guess they would be like, hey, we found this dead person. We don't know who he is. He's from your country. Oh, come get him? Come, Yeah. 
Well, it's also a good way to see yeah. if if the where's he at? He's at the pier, <laughs> <laughs> and we have children playing. So if you don't yeah. mind, speed it up. <laughs> it's probably also a good way to check and see if it worked, because if you have like a general, like a, if they want it, if they want it to work, if you have, if you find the other side's plans, yeah, you would empty the pocket. You go like, oh, this is how we got his body. Yeah. But if the plans are still in there. You know, then they go, oh, well, he had this plan. Surely they read these and you would change it. So yeah. it's like, I feel like it's also a way to see if the plan worked if they re- when they returned the body, mm-hmm. if his pockets are empty. Yeah. Imagine they return the body, the plans are still in there, and they're like, oh, they didn't even look at the... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they take him back? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, bad guy, this is strike two. Okay, yeah. you can't... You're not yeah. in charge of anything anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Justin. <laughs> How loud was that? <laughs> was that? Was that too loud? I mean, no, he gets, gets into it. I appreciate it. <laughs> Do you have headphones on? Listen to <laughs> You could maybe sit in the other room and do this podcast. That was the most. I get fired up about stuff. I mean, ain't, that was like, who was it? Your family? Was yeah. he the guy? You guys get fired up. Like, who? Your family came up with this plan in Spain? You go, it would have worked if they would have done it. <laughs> what? That was so fiery. <laughs> <laughs> it, so it didn't work it, it did work oh it did work it, we were just speculating what if it didn't work and then they're like the plans are still there but it worked and uh germany moved a lot of their troops to greece because they thought that's where they were going to go and then britain invaded sicily and the plan worked oh wow yeah wow well, what's my favorite part about world war ii is there's yeah, so nice many and easy <laughs> he goes, <laughs> he goes just, i'll tell you guys what about favorite? <laughs> I mean, what are my favorite parts you know just funny i look over at the yeah. guy monitor and it's just the screen is red yeah and i was like that's probably me because uh, it's peaking <laughs> what's up everybody it's just Smith. Uh, the one thing i think about world war ii is my uh, favorite part is i just got a nice easy I, yeah I, what I, is I, your favorite part of world war ii oh just the, how much oh. like unconvinced <laughs> i would Tony. hope that, that we Thanks, won buddy. yeah <laughs> No, no, no. I love the there was so much like unconventional warfare during World War II. Like nothing was kind of like it was just like, I don't know, let's try this. Yeah. Like, the, like there's so many and things. It, like, and it worked. Yeah. It's crazy. Well, like the rubber tank thing with Patton, where they were trying to when they were doing D-Day, they knew how much like Germany respected Patton. So they used him as a decoy and they put him somewhere else and thinking the Germans were gonna move their troops to that area. I don't. I'm. I'm not trying to like get ahead of anything. Is it? Know? I don't know that. Yeah. That's like a. It's like. It's like a whole. It's like a whole thing. Or even like. A, um. There was a thing. Well, what I know. We're briefs. I don't. What do you know? It. The story. Yeah. Well, they they knew because General Patton was yeah. like this genius, and he was. Yeah. Uh, he was a I don't wild know man. Much about him, but yeah. He's but, like a wild. I mean, man. I know who he is. Like he should have been, uh, like a four star general, but he was so hard to get along with that he was only like a two star. So he imagined being like he was like the kind Doug like Cracker Stanhope. Barrel. He was like Doug Stanhope of like yeah. of of <laughs> yeah. I don't even know what that means. <laughs> well, the waitresses have stars, and sometimes they're good servers, but they're they're got an attitude. <laughs> pull, pull the mic back. Yeah. You're, you're getting excited. Yeah. Like <laughs> you're our General Patton. So let's. Uh... But like his whole his whole thing was he was. <laughs> That's just, by, the end, by the end, I'm just, I'm just, yeah. it's all the way over just here. eating, and that sounded terrific. When it was all <laughs> yeah. just, uh, I just got to get a, a bumper every yeah. time I. It was, uh, yeah. But he's like a he's like a maniac. So, but he he terrified everybody because he was so like, I mean, there's uh, like footage or like uh, stories about him, you know, uh, pulling into town. He would have like an air raid siren. To let everybody know, like the enemy know that he was coming. Like that's how cocky oh, wow. he was. Yeah. But there was a a, a story where there was uh, a bunch of like uh, planes, like Japanese pl- or uh, German planes, were flying overhead, like this area that they supposedly had control over, and all the soldiers were like diving for cover. And Patton had these uh, pearl handle pistols, and he would he would shoot. There's like there's like a story of him shooting at the plane while everybody else is. Like diving for cover. Oh, wow. he was like a wild, like yeah. a, a, a like a wild guy. Like he believed uh, in uh, reincarnation, and he believed that he was in the Battle of Thermopylae, which is like the movie Three Hundred. Like it's like he believed that he was a Spartan. Yeah, and there was like a story where he had never been before, and he found the battle site without ever. Like he just told a driver, like, "Hey, drive here," 
and he found the battle because he was like, I've been here before. Yeah. Like, it was much like, like, he's just a character. He's, he's yeah. wild. Yeah. And so, uh, all the other generals were very, like, put together and, like, they had, like, their very formal, kind of think of, like, British officers type. And then Patton was just a lunatic. So, they knew the Germans were afraid of him. So, they used him as a decoy and they put him in a different part of France. Or I think it's France or where they put him on a different coastline with like a fake army. Like they built fake tents and all this stuff to make them think that's where the Americans were going to land. And then, so Germany moved all their defenses to where Patton was. And then that's why D-Day was, that's why we could do it because like there was all the defenses were in different places. Wow. That, and I wonder if, uh, like, I wonder if he took that, did he take it well? He, he wasn't happy about it. Yeah. Like he was like, he was like, no, but well, how about you just let me command them Yeah, and I'll, and yeah. I'll hand like, but his whole thing was like, if 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 they it's it's that it's the old argument of if you let the soldiers fight, he's like his whole thing was like we we would have taken we like w- the world war would have taken six months once yeah. we landed like if they if they had listened to him but they were trying to be diplomatic and yeah all the stuff so like it's kind of like the argument of the wild man versus the. Mm. Like we're gonna be friends with these people. After yeah, this. he's definitely not calling the park services about the bats. <laughs> no, no. Like they've they've been great. Uh, General Pat, do you mind talking to uh, Dennis at the park services? <laughs> he's like, uh, this is Dennis. <laughs> he goes, yeah, he's like, we're he coming goes, to get the bat. He goes, we're coming to get the bat. And he goes, well, sir, I don't know if you know the bats are hard to find, and we don't want you to get them. It's like, yeah, I don't even know why we're I'm on the phone. Like, <laughs> sir, some paperwork you have to fill out. He goes, there'll be none. No paperwork. I can shoot you in the face. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. You want to do that? <laughs> well, here at home, some of this stuff made me feel a little bit better because, you know, that was known as the greatest generation because yeah. they went through the Depression and then the war and everyone stepped up and did their part. What Before? if they would argue the otherwise? <laughs> yeah. Because they knew they, they are the greatest generation. Like I'm saying, those people, but they're yeah, like, yeah. you know, we like make it like you guys are the greatest. He's like, yeah, it was pretty brutal, man. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Yeah. Well, I'm about, were you about to say something, Dusty? Well, I, I just wanted to, before we go too far about this homeless guy that they, uh, they, they were like, oh, we found this homeless guy and he died of eating rat poison. Mm-hmm. Seems like they knew too well how he died. Yeah. Seemed like they found a person they deemed invaluable to society and they were like, oh, yeah. Yeah, we'll use this guy. That's true. That is probably true. But this, they're like, this guy can serve his country and. Do something, you know. I mean, be he, part of the greatest. Generation. Certainly wasn't paying taxes. That's yeah. For sure. yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And that's for them to decide. That's not his decision, <laughs> right? Yeah, well, that's that's right. Yeah. Do you want to serve your country, sir? I mean, not really. <laughs> Eat this. Uh... Eat these uh, chiclets here. Yeah. Whatever. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, you want this chiclets and diet coke? <laughs> he goes. I'm gonna have it eaten in months. So yeah, I'll take it. I think they found him after he was dead. I don't think they made him eat the rat poison. But again, I haven't seen the movie. Oh, uh, it's a movie. There's a Netflix movie about this Operation oh. Mince Meat. Oh. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. Well, I do feel like as far as like war I'm, goes, like the soundtrack for like World War II was like not that great. Like whenever you watch like any type of war movies, like the soundtrack's always like classical like if you do, music. But like if even if you do like Revolutionary War, like it's still like a fun drum mm. beat, you know, like a that type and then even like World War One, it's kind of like a big band drum kind of a fun kind of thing and then like world war ii is just kind of like a one nasally guy kind of singing like all right like like a high-pitched tenor like kind of like by himself and then after Mm -hmm. that it just you get into like doors music and forrest gump soundtrack i've never really listened to the world war ii soundtrack but that's good is it forrest gump no that's that's what i'm saying then it goes to all (laughs) all the soundtracks to all the other like war like the war yeah Yeah. Yeah. but like if you like if you watch like like Saving you're looking, Private Ryan. You were looking for help on that one too. Right? <laughs> I mean, I was, I was, th- I thought it, I, I was. You like, were looking me in the yeah. eyes, but just <laughs> like, like a man bell- floating yeah. in the ocean, <laughs> just going, "Are you not going to grab me? Please grab me." <laughs> you get the tenor. I'd, I'd like the to tenor makes this hound noises. He goes, <laughs> <laughs> <You're> looking, <laughs> <laughs> "I'd like to go to the record store and go." Oh hey, yeah, I'm looking for the <laughs> World War II soundtrack. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. It's That's not why be good. when you go yeah. when you watch World War II movies, it's all like they have to use a composer because there's no like good music from that from era. that era. Oh, because they weren't making yeah yeah. So it's like no all, one was being creative. It was like such a all the creativity was spent was on gone. that project. Yeah, yeah. 
Well, it's like because it was depression. That is true. Right. Good well, point. Well, Carl, hey, look at this. Yeah, yeah. Look, look at the thing that was working wow. so good, and then everybody yeah. else left me like a cruise passenger. Yeah. No, yeah. I disagree. That- I totally disagree with everything you said, Justin. <laughs> and I mean, this is the music he yeah. grew up on. Yeah, exactly yeah. right. I'm sorry. Big, big, to, big band. To- Come on, we had big band going. <laughs> yeah, big band and swing. That's where it's at. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, you may be right. I don't know. Uh, I just, I just, I just think about like whenever you watch like certain movies of like, I mean, like I think of any Vietnam movie you watch, and it's just littered CCR with. I mean that. I mean you think of like the Doors. You think of all these like great, like great music comes from like wartime. To- like it's like it yeah, creates yeah. great art. Yeah, and then like that, that's the one where all it's, the like, draft dodgers back home making music. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that helps. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I just love that you have the look of you could be on either side of that issue. Oh yeah, like, oh, that's yeah. my favorite. That is part. true. Yeah, <laughs> you do yeah. have that very yeah. much. You like you don't know. Yeah. You're like he either was a draft dodger, a draft dodger, or he has a. I've seen or he some did things. some big things. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> either way. Well, they were called the Greatest Generation, which I would argue they were. But no, they. they I would argue that. I'm just saying. Yeah. It's I know. Funny I know. To picture. It's very funny because they they knew the people. They yeah. were like, no, there's some guys. I don't even mean I'm that. I'm about to give I an think, example. Well, it's like they're. Uh, it's they're the greatest generation, but it's like it's like we tell them that, and they just had. To, I'm saying that it's it's crazy to like say that, and that's all they really got. They're like, oh, thanks, man. You're like, we think very highly of you, and you're like, yeah, it was miserable, dude. Yeah. Like, and we're like, well, we'll call you the greater generation. Yeah. How about that? Yeah. You know. Well, like, yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, they're. So like, I mean, you, you think know, it. Like, well, no one, you said greater. You, yeah. Yeah, but I say stuff wrong all the time, so you should get it. I just yeah. want to make. Yeah, I was trying to. Well, I agree that they're like they're. If you go to like uh, Cuba, the cars that they like that generation designed are still working in Cuba, like to this day. Like, if you want to talk about how well they made everything, like think about all the houses and stuff that we live. In. I was like, these are all. They all built everything that's still around. Yeah. Like in Oklahoma. That generation's houses are the only ones that are still left. Everybody yeah, else, I mean, true. everything else is yeah. just. Yeah, I'm for the greatest yeah. generation. So just that. I just want to. I just want to make sure the music. What's was your the problem only with thing. the greatest generation? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was just. They had to go through so much, and and it's. Uh, well, I'm about to give yeah, an example I get how what you're saying. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm just gonna give an example how they're not as different than us as we might think, because a lot of people during the pandemic would be like. You can't even wear a mask. The greatest generation stood up and did all this stuff. You know, gladly did all this stuff. Well. Uh, when the war broke out, the government said, we need to conserve gasoline and rubber. So they lowered the speed limit. They asked voluntarily, lowered the speed limit to 35 miles per hour. They called it victory speed. And uh, nobody I'd would... rather wear a mask. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> nobody would do it. So they finally had to make it a law. So speed limit during World War II for part of the time was 35 miles per hour. And they called it victory speed. And there's signs, you can Google it, there's signs that you know, the speed limit, 35 victory speed. And it was like, you know, we're doing this to victory in the war. What, but what was the, why, why did they do that? To conserve gasoline oh, okay. All right. and rubber. They felt like if you went, went slower, it would burn less rubber. Okay. And people had to put stickers on their car to show what kind of job they had. If they had an essential, if they were an essential worker that needed to drive more, you could go further miles per week than you could. You weren't supposed to be on the road just for fun. To gotcha. conserve gasoline. I mean, did everybody even have cars mm. back then? Was it? They were taking off. I think it said I read eighty percent of people had cars by then. Oh wow! So um, I'm sure then they caught all the leaders on their cars <laughs> going really fast. Yeah, going fast, <laughs> and they go, "Oh yeah, it's on the news." <laughs> yeah, it's on the local news. <laughs> all right, and that was D Day. Uh, next up, Mayor. Frying yeah. pan. I don't know. That yeah. name. I got stuck with the frying pan. They completely stopped making cars during World War II because all the automobile companies started making uh, bombers. Yeah, and tanks yeah. and and stuff like that. So that's the other reason. Like, guys, we're not making new cars, so you better keep the ones you have. Yeah. So do we have a lot of stuff to make these new signs that say "Victory Speed"? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, just stupid. Like you go. It, that's the reason they want to go. I feel like if you just asked everybody to do it, yeah, it would be. So they did ask everybody, and nobody was doing it. Yeah, most people weren't honoring it, and then they made it a law. So then they made new signs. Yeah, 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 yeah. I like this one though. Save your five best tires. That's I. Like, who has five tires? <laughs> you got a, one in the back. Uh. Yeah, I guess so. But 
Who has more sell sell others to Uncle Sam? I mean, yeah. They just had a bunch of tires back then. Look yeah. at all these tires. I think to me, it's like you guys got five tires. I don't even have five. I got four. Like I don't have a spare anymore. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's the. Uh, I feel like it's always it goes to the you're asking. Yeah, it's like the, what about the people making the cars? Like that's the thing. It's like you always like you're like you that those people have to go like all right. So I got to drive thirty miles an hour. I can't have tires. Blah, blah blah. And then you're like, well, do you get a discount for like? tires or do you get like is something because the people making it still make the money right yeah yeah and we have made those signs i mean those signs yeah. no one brought that those, with those signs you don't just you have to go get them throw them away yeah i think about that all because there's a lot of towns they put the mayor of the town like on the sign like in nashville mm -hmm. they do that and you're like every time there's like a new mayor they gotta like change it Every, so like your first thing in office is like five hundred thousand dollars just to put your name on the town like on where on a like a interstate like, sign no 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 like welcome to Nashville and then a lot of time it'll yeah. say mayor but I always think it's like on a thing that hangs but you still have to replace those if you lose if it's costing five hundred thousand dollars <laughs> yeah I we got to work on that. what town are you <laughs> yeah. in charge of Justin <laughs> <laughs> you're the mayor half a million yeah, I mean you're just getting robbed left and right. $500,000 well, to go change stuff. I mean, every 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 street that leaves your town has one of those signs. Mm -hmm. So if you have a large enough town, like Oklahoma City is like a large landmass, even though there's not like a lot of people, there's a large, so like there's a bunch of interstates and highways and roads. So you have to change those every time a mayor, so like that, it could easily be $500,000. There's no Just, way. Just, I'm telling you. I hope it signs is. Signs are, I knew a guy, I knew a guy. For some that, reason, I'll be okay with it if it's five hundred. <laughs> right, hold on, I gotta, oh, let me, let me, all right, yeah. okay, so, yeah. the, the I knew a guy that made signs, like his, he had like a sign company, like mm. he did like the crushed glass reflective sign company. Oh, yeah. That was his whole thing. That's crushed glass? Yeah. That's fun. They, 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 they like do it, they like make it to like, like a like a fine powder yeah. almost. Yeah. So when light hits it, it like reflects. Oh. So he would. That's what he made. He made signs like that yeah. and tape and all that stuff. Yeah. And they he goes, you would not believe how much street signs. Cost. Would he always just vote for the opposite person just to keep business going? I don't. I mean, that's brilliant. If it that's, be, I mean, yeah, it's so great. Yeah. Just you just. <laughs> You just you you fund you fund funds, packs for yeah. <laughs> just <laughs> and you're like some reason in Oklahoma they're like dude they don't they barely last out here you're like this guy is just putting so much money behind the opposite thing. Well, when all the men went off to fight the war, the women went into the workforce to build a lot of this stuff, mm -hmm. and that's how like Rosie the Riveter right. was you know Rosie the Riveter. It's kind of like Uncle Sam yeah. of. Fictitious. Oh, is it the girl yeah, with the, the flex, yeah. Yeah, the oh, flex yeah. the muscle? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Angela had a special where yeah. she did that. It was just kind of a symbol of women power and, right. and we can do it and stuff like that. So they went in the workforce. And, and then all the, the, the wives complained to their husbands getting shot in the shoulder. They go, you think you had a rough day. Uh, <laughs> today I was at work. <laughs> As the women, like they start complaining. Oh, uh, Susie was just bam, 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 bam. And, and the husband's like, I mean, I was like almost killed by like, these people came out of a tunnel and it was like pretty wild. But what happened? <laughs> well, we had an office party. And <laughs> she didn't remember my birthday. And then the movie A League of Their Own. Yeah. Well, I was yeah. get to that next. Yeah. So sports got really up upended. I mean, it's pretty crazy that the greatest athletes of our time were fighting a war. And in baseball, especially, Ted Williams like actively fought. Yeah, that's crazy. He I won mean, the triple crown, and then the next year he's fighting their war. That's why you almost got to be like that. They're the best baseball players of all time. For him to have all the records and all, like you know, oh my gosh, Holly just came in. She got a haircut. Uh, Christmas cut. Yeah, uh, yeah. And then they put stuff on her, which she likes. Uh, she got a haircut before this and the the top of it was crooked because we went they went to like pet smores and and uh and the top was just like so the past like two or three weeks she just her hair has been flat and just looked like a cowlick at the top <laughs> just some you know whoever just a kid just was like that's good enough. yeah you know yeah the super the super cuts of yeah of yeah we, did, we took her to the super cuts <laughs> yeah uh she got a massage watched the game uh we uh uh, I don't know what I was talking. You were about. talking about Ted Williams in yeah. baseball, but isn't that like you should just go like you're number one because you had to fight a war. So we're just 
you because you have the records. Right. He has all the records, and we just imagine you'd have even more. Oh yeah. And you had to fight, and that's crazy. Crazy. Joe DiMaggio went yeah. too, but they kept him from serving. Why? I, they thought he. I don't know what the difference between him and Ted Williams is, but what I read was he was such a national treasure. He asked to fight, but the powers that be kept him from active duty. Yeah. I mean, he was in the military, but didn't actively fight. Ted yeah. Williams are like just. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> He's just like a mule they throw out there. <laughs> Ted Williams they go, get on out of there. <laughs> <laughs> so they did create this women's baseball league. League of Their Own is a great movie. Great movie. It is really good. I just watched it not long ago again, and it holds up. It's really great. Mm. Now, there's a series I haven't seen now called A League of Their Own. Uh, probably not good. Yeah. Uh, what they don't say in the movie is there were some differences. The The ball was the size of a softball. and the So they played softball. Well, they still pitched oh. overhand, but oh. the ball was bigger. Yeah. And the bases <clears throat> weren't uh, 90 feet apart. They were – like 60 it was the field was a little bit smaller yeah it's something that it, it, that's uh a very beautiful thing though like it's i was making fun of yeah the w- women working with that but it is it's very it'd be very prideful to go you go into places and you see women working and the women on the field and you're like man that's it's like the country like just coming together it's gotta be a pretty special that's something you don't feel like you it's hard to feel that now and yeah so to feel that back then would be i mean pretty yeah, empowering totally. like Everyone stepped up. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. And then once the guys came home, the women went back in the kitchen. Yeah. <laughs> they go. They go. Well, that, you know, that's they go, a, so we're going to keep playing baseball. That's again. a joke. That's a joke. Yeah. Well, that's the great thing about the movie A League of Their Own. Like, whether true or not, it's good in the story is like, you know, Gina Davis was this really great player. Mm. But when her husband came back, she's like, I want to start a family. Yeah. So she didn't want to keep playing. And some of the other women did, but she was like the best. Yeah. yeah. But she did play. She... No, she went back. Didn't she go back? Well, she finished the season. She finished the season, yeah. yeah. But then yeah. she quit. Yeah. 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 Uh, and football, college football, there was so much disruption um, that they had to play the Rose Bowl in North Carolina. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Mainly that was because Pearl Harbor just happened. They're like, we don't need to be that close to the West Coast where somebody could attack us. So they played the uh, – So we go cancel the game? No, no, we're still doing it. <laughs> Uh, just let's go Durham, North, North Carolina. Yeah, it's crazy to think they go like if you're that like. Well, all right. Well, what do you want to move it to Arizona or something like that? They go no, no, no. no, no. I want to. Let's get out of here. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah. <laughs> so middle of the country? No, 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 no. no, no, no. no. Well, almost to the yeah. other coast. Well, how far can we go? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm pretty sure Oklahoma State won a national championship about that time too. So that that, oh, that yeah. tracks with the. Uh, there's all this chaos, and you're like, hey, how about we just sneak one? How about we sneak a championship yeah, in here real that. quick? <laughs> I looked, just because I thought that might have been when Vanderbilt claimed theirs. I was hoping yeah. it would be. Yeah. But Vanderbilt's was in 1921 and 1922, which is even better, because that's when the pandemic was going on, when they are probably like the only team playing. Yeah. <laughs> Look at that. We did it, though. <laughs> yeah. I like that. Only ones that had a cure. Yeah. 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 In the NFL, there were so few players that weren't in the war, they combined some teams. So the Pittsburgh Steelers and Philadelphia Eagles became the Steagles. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's cool. Really got That's probably a cool shirt to have. Yeah. You had a Steagles shirt? Yeah. I bet Aaron has a hat. I'm sure those yeah. fan bases really liked joining together. Yeah, yeah. Just <laughs> they hopefully they did it for each other. They threw car batteries at each other. Steagles. Oh, I forgot that Operation uh Mincemeat. The one of the guys who came up with the idea was Ian Fleming, creator of James Bond. Oh, oh wow. wow. And I think I mentioned in a previous episode the spies episode that he knew a guy <laughs> that tipped the u.s off or tipped u.s off about pearl harbor but nobody listened to him there's a conspiracy theory that they knew pearl harbor was going to happen but the u.s wanted to go to the war but people at home were like no we don't want to go to war so they let it happen to have a reason to go to war oh wow but yeah. I, I, I don't i've heard that well, yeah. of course, I mean, yeah. Yeah. have you? Because he wrote it. Yeah, <laughs> that's yeah. why. No, I have heard that, but yeah, who knows? Well, yeah. I was gonna. We haven't. Uh, we haven't talked about Hitler, but there's conspiracies about how he really died, which I'm assuming you know all about. Well, yeah, I mean, they they. Well, some people say he went off to um, Argentina, Argentina yeah. with his wife, uh, and then they, you know, lived out their life there. Right. A lot of the Nazi leaders, they feel like escaped to South America. Well, a lot of them. Came to America. Still here. Yeah, I mean, and, and, you know, like Werner von Braun, who you're talking about being at that, I mean, I think he was a scientist in World War II from Germany. 
Yeah, that's how I started my set. Yeah, I mean, Von Braun, oh, the Von Braun Center. Yeah, Yeah, I mean, Werner Von Braun, yeah, he's one of the founders of NASA, was from, you know, the Did he, was he on their side? I think so. Do they know, like, how did that even, yeah, that is, how does that even happen? Well, I think he escaped from there, right? And then he came here and helped us develop well, technology. I, I, I don't know. I mean, I think the idea being, well, he's a scientist and he's got a lot of information now. So why why yeah. kill this guy when we could use this information? When we could name a sinner after him. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. it's Huntsville. I mean, uh, Volkswagen was started, that company was started by the Nazis. And, yeah. uh, and then last week, Alice, her name? Alison yeah. Milano? Yeah. Alyssa Milano. Alyssa Milano. Yeah. She gave up her Tesla because of Elon Musk and said, I'm going to drive a Volkswagen now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Did, uh, yeah, that's crazy. That's great. So they came. So what was, yeah, because there isn't there a documentary or something on Netflix. Like I've never watched it, but. Yeah, Wikipedia says he was a member of the Nazi party and uh, a word I don't know. And um, yeah, and then. Uh, uh, as well as a leading figure in the development of rocket technology in Nazi Germany and later a pioneer of rocket and space technology in the United States. Yeah, it's a very, that's a very weird thing. Like it's, because uh, it's like, so if he's the leader of the Nazi party, that's like being, even though it's not now we know what it is, but it would be like being a Democrat or Republican. Like it was like, that's what it was. It was like a party, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. So it's, and then, uh, but that is, it, like for what that party did, it is crazy that you're like these dudes just don't like you know. It makes you think the government obviously doesn't care. Well, if you're like if you're going to use, I mean, uh, we're using the guy. You're like, well, now we use him, and then you're like, but you now you're, he's named stuff after him, and then you're you're like, yeah, it's wild. I think that too. I mean, because Huntsville is really a lot of stuff with his yeah. name on it. Yeah, but I guess if you're a scientist, you're not a you're not making the laws. You're not. You know, coming up with that, you're just doing your science stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I don't have the answer, yeah. but I do think that's interesting. Yeah, that is interesting. I mean, it's like, it's, yeah. So with Hitler, I mean, the common accepted thing is he did he committed suicide. He and his, his new wife, and uh, they burned their bodies. <clears throat> and uh, But when they did a recent autopsy or DNA or something on part of the skull, it came back to be it not a him, a woman or something like that. So there's these conspiracy theories. One, that he escaped to South America, like you said, Argentina. There's another one, Dusty, that uh, the Nazis were really into hollow earth. Oh, yeah, I've heard that too. And that they all escaped to Antarctica, this hollow earth. Yeah. I just really left that open for you to tell us about well, it. Well, I mean, I don't, you know, I don't. <laughs> I don't know. I'm, just, I'm just pulling the. Yeah, I, didn't, I didn't even read it. I just yeah. like, Dusty, take over. Well, yeah. I don't know a lot about the hollow earth stuff, but they talk about Antarctica. They do seem to have, they do seem to do a lot of things in Antarctica. Like major political leaders are always going down to Antarctica to do things. Like John Kerry's been down there a bunch. Like some, uh, just a bunch of people go down there and it's like, what are you guys up to down there? Yeah. And I guess some people say that in the hollow earth world, what, what people believe that that would be the entrance there in Antarctica. So saying the earth is hollow. Yeah. So like, like inside the earth, there's a lot of stuff going on that oh, we like don't people know. live in there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I was watching this history movie called Godzilla versus King Kong. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's what happened. They took King Kong down to Antarctica and I think he went into his, yeah, there is a work. King Kong movie where they go into that. Well, and I think it's, it's the pretty, one I just said. Yeah, I don't know if it was King Kong versus Godzilla, though, okay. that, that they did that. They also did it in Alien versus Predator. It was, did uh, they? Yeah, Mr. Hip. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But at the the, the uh, King Kong movie I saw was really great. I don't think that was King Kong versus Godzilla, but they went in the earth, and it's pretty wild. Um, but, you know, I'm not. I don't buy into the... Hollow Earth. I think the Earth could be very, like very deep, and yeah. there's some caves and cavernous that we don't know about that goes very deep. But yeah, I don't think the Earth is hollow. Yeah, it'd have to be circle for that. Right. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> hey, you know, I mean, yeah. I can't argue with that. Yeah. 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 The man says something. The man says something. I don't. Yeah. Know, you know, he goes, "I'm just sitting here having a good time." Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there were some rumors that the Nazi. I thought we were going to have a lot more on Hollow Earth, so 
So, <laughs> so we're uh, kind of at the end. Yeah, uh, yeah. I don't know anything about this. So, like they're so they could live there and people. What the temperature is in Hollow Earth? Yeah, King Kong seemed to be fine without a sweater. I mean, yeah. if you follow the Matrix line of thought, the warm the further down you go, the more the warmer oh, that's it is. in Matrix. They're in Hollow Earth. Yeah, well, so no, they're, they're in. They're further. They burrow down into the earth. So the idea in the Matrix is that the Earth is molten, mm-hmm. and so the the core is so cold that they've had to drill down into the earth to be warm, like to stay warm. Oh. But that doesn't mean it's hollow. That's just yeah. like a, they drilled there and made yeah, the city. Yeah, yeah, So it kind of flies in the... Yeah. The Matrix universe flies in the way of Dusty's. Yeah, yeah wow. it would be... Uh, I would think... Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I mean, that's what they say, right? I mean, that's what they say is that there's lava in the center of the earth, right? right. Even though they've never been able to get down there they're like that's what's down there and we just assume because volcanoes erupt that that's what's in there but yeah. so it would make sense if you got closer to it it would be hot yeah right <laughs> but if yeah. you dig into the ground it gets colder yeah <laughs> you know what I mean? yeah. <laughs> i've never been like i need to warm up let's dig a hole <laughs> well they but you're, you're supposed to dig a hole if you're out in the uh get stuck out in the w- wilderness you dig a hole and lay to the ground no, get, no, they tell you. Did they tell you to lay to the ground? Cause, or you lose your heat. Maybe no, you, I think you're supposed to lay on the ground, right? Yeah. To get warm? Yeah. yeah. But no, yeah, it's actually to put something, you put something underneath you because otherwise you will lose yeah. your oh, right, to yeah. the temperature, to yeah. the ground, which are is you, true. Now I'm back with Dusty. Oh, yeah. boy. Wait, are I, you, are I you, may you, want to shut that computer. I don't like <laughs> yeah. you know? Are, you, are yeah. you talking about, because I know when you're, camp, if, if you're in the desert, you're supposed to. You have a campfire. You're supposed to take coals from the campfire and then bury them, and then you lay on top of them. No, no. This is saying, like, if you were stuck out in the, like, just you get lost, stuck in the wild, you need to lay on leaves and stuff because otherwise, all your heat will go through the ground. You'll be much more colder. So you need some kind of. And you could get wet, I yeah. guess, too, like just a moisture. Yeah, I don't. I I could be all backwards on this. Yeah. But I, I mean, think that's sense. the way it goes. Yeah, it seems like it, it makes sense. And then, you know, so yeah, if it would get colder, it's true. I wonder how yeah. far, but if you go way down. And if you like, go to a rock quarry and be like, does it feel hotter? That's true. So and why, also if you're hot, I would think if you'd get down in the dirt, it would cool you be, down. Yeah. But a cave stays the exact same temperature. And it's never, it's not hot, but it's it's like 70 or something or 68. So it does not get colder if you go to a cave. Like they, oh. you can go to cave, it's always the same temperature. Right. Like at night, it's not colder at night no. than it is in the daytime. No. Yeah. Hmm. So, by so this- there, your, your definition of hot could be, it's not <laughs> lava. I'm so glad Warner Von Braun came over here yeah. <laughs> and helped us out with some stuff. Or- yeah. I mean, so yeah. by that logic, that means that like volcanoes are like lava pimples is what you're saying. Yeah. yeah, and not yeah. I mean, because the idea being that, that that since we have volcanoes, that must mean that inside the Earth is lava. Mm-hmm. But I'm saying, yeah. I mean, maybe we just have these, you know, lava pits. I yes. Mean, I mean, we're not we we're not a, pits. we're not all pus when you have a yeah. you know we're not right. Yeah. We're all a water. pimple is just a small part of a human body. Yeah, mm-hmm. and not always active. I yeah. mean, not always. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's not. You know what I mean? The pimple, yeah. like a volcano. Yeah. Listen, Dusty, I'm not converting, but I'm listening yeah. now. Okay, yeah. like I'm not. You're making some. There's some yeah. solid. Yeah. Some solid yeah. things. I'm on. I like it. it. I mean, I like it. Uh, there's some rumors. Go ahead, Hitler, Brian. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Brian. Get me off topic, Brian. <laughs> head back to Hitler. <laughs> there were rumors that the Nazis had developed a death ray that could kill soldiers from a long distance. So the British offered a prize for whoever could zap a sheep from 100 paces. Back then, that's kind of how they, the paces was a big yeah. thing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. But no one, no one could do it. But while experimenting, they invented radar, which helped them defeat the Germans. Because now they could spot. Yeah. Who came up with that plan? Oh, the Nazis. There was a rumor that the Nazis yeah. had a death ray. Yeah. Could kill you from far away. So then away. the Nazis started fighting Germany. What you said? You said this so they defeated German Germany. Uh, Did we get the death ray? No, there there was no death ray. Who made uh. the radar? <laughs> 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 the British invented while trying to come oh, up with British. something to zap a sheep. Yeah, I think you said the Nazis invented it, then they defeated Germany. That's what I think I got confused. Okay, 
Yeah. That didn't make sense. So there was so the no British, death ray. There was no death ray. There was no death ray, but there was a oh, rumor. the British got a rumor that the Nazis yes. made death ray. So then they, then the British, I didn't catch that. Okay. So the British then said, you go make, we go make our own death That's ray. right. So they were trying to invent it, their own. But then they made radar. Yeah. Okay. They were I trying mean, to zap I a missed, sheep. I got, yeah. We don't know from if they did make the death ray. A sheep? Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah. From 100 paces. Dang, Sheep but. don't move quick, so you can keep it there for <laughs> yeah, a while. I guess so, yeah. You know, if it's something fast, you'd be a ton of paces. Not 200 paces, it's already gone. <laughs> yeah. But a sheep, you're like, ton of paces, it'll be there for most of the day. Yeah. You said it's England that came up with the 100 paces? British. He said British. <laughs> yeah, but they're he said, English. They're English. He said British yeah. came up with it. Sorry. Yeah. Just, Justin, people well, listen to this for real <laughs> information. Dude. It just kind of makes me. I'm going to yeah, British yeah, on tour. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which is like they they're like the British are the reason we have the wonky foot meter or like foot yard system. So for them to be like paces on top of that too, it's like, man, use your system. Yeah. That's like crazy. Oh, that's why the British they used Yeah, because like the foot and yard are all like measurements that they coin. That's why we use them because we were yeah, colonies. So And then oh, and everybody else said meters. Well, like the metric system. So people of, get mad at us, and we're like, it "Ain't our fault, dude." Yeah, but that's why they think it's crazy because they're like, oh, yeah. like paces." You're like, "No, use your wonky system. Use your system. Mm-hmm. Don't start throwing another thing out there." Yeah. Like, that's why. That's why we're all turned around. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. that is true. Yeah, we all been doing yards out here. Now yeah. you're throwing in paces. We're trying to build yeah. a death ray. We're trying to build a. He's <laughs> 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 what about a bat bomb? <laughs> <laughs> What are they? That is funny. They call it a death ray. They go, what is? What is it? It's a ray of death. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. And he goes, yeah. What if we do a, just some big long name? And there it goes. I don't like the name. Death ray. Death ray. Yeah. And they go, all right, all right. Yeah. That's probably a good place to stop. Very good place to stop. Yeah. The old death ray. Yeah. <laughs> Killed the podcast at the end. Yeah. Uh, all right. World War Two. It was funner than I thought. So they said, as everybody said that was in it. Uh, <laughs> Everybody's fought in that war. They're like, it's actually a pretty good time. Uh, no. Uh, uh, all right. Uh, I was going to uh, say, Justin Special, go check it out. Yeah, yeah. Coronation. It's out right now. Go to YouTube. We'll post the link. Uh, okay. It's a great special, buddy. It's good. You've been killing it on the road, too, with me. And, oh, yeah, man. So it's been, uh, yeah. Go check uh, his special out. Uh, I uh, I will be uh, in uh, Charlotte this week uh, and some other places. Go to, my, go to my website. Everything's on there. Midland, Texas. I'll pass some Texas runs. Toronto, coming for New Year's Eve and then uh, all next uh, year. Uh, all on tour. Uh, where are you guys? This week I got a couple of company Christmas parties. I'm working, Dusty. All right. Yeah. 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 It's important. You really, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let them know. I even put it on my website. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody can come to it, but I still want people to know. He goes, private event only. Can we get tickets? I don't think so. I just want people to know. Yeah. But <clears throat> January 6th. Do you 6th, have a private event or do you have company Christmas party on it? Um, I don't know what I put, but I let people know I'm out there. I hope you put, yeah, company. I hope company, you put company, company Christmas, Christmas party. party and the address, but no one can come. But no one can come. If y'all want to meet and greet, maybe when I walk back to the car <laughs> carrying my microphone and speaker, I'll talk to you. I'll talk to you. I could use some help. Uh, but January, my January sixth show. Got moved to January seventh. Oh, I think wow. they had something else going on the sixth. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Mm. But, <laughs> but uh, Jan- now January seventh. Now in Atlanta at uh, ASW Whiskey Exchange. Please come to that January seventh and January twenty eighth. I'm in Waukesha. I think I'm saying that right. Waukesha, Wisconsin, at Fox River Christian Church with Johnny W and Darren Strebelo. Yeah, fun. Three of us there. So uh, right. tickets on sale for that. Yeah. Uh, December 22nd, 23rd, I'm in Oklahoma City doing holiday shows. I'm there at Bricktown Comedy Club. And then uh, the week of New Year's Eve, I'm in Omaha, Nebraska at the Funny Bone with Colleen and every, all the great people. Oh, yeah. There, so. They're the best. They're the best. Omaha, yeah. The best. All right. This weekend, I'm at the Cincinnati Funny Bone in Liberty Township, Ohio. Great place. It's going to be great. And great then, hotel. It too. is great. Yeah. yeah. That whole little area is great. It's great. It's going to be a lot of fun. And then I'm... Uh, December 13th, back at Zany's in Nashville. All right. Yeah. 
All right. Uh, all right. As always, we'll welcome Aaron back next week. I was glad this worked out, though. Uh, Justin? I have to work on this chair before he gets back. I don't yeah. want to leave any evidence, you know. No, a little squeaky chair, you, you know. You look the part. You look great. <laughs> what if Aaron doesn't get back? That's true. Justin be here forever. No. Yeah. Get used you to get it. stuck in Mexico. Get used to it. This camera Ooh. angle. Justinville. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, all right, everybody. We love you. Bye. Nate Land is produced by Nate Land Productions and by me. Nate Bargetsy and my wife Laura on the All Things Comedy Network. Recording and editing for the show is done by Genovations Media. Thanks for tuning in. Be sure to catch us next week on the Nateland Podcast.